is cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe, and I've gotten you a present that I put under the tree. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for you and me. The snow is falling. On its way, but as long as you're around, everything will be okay. Cause all I wanna do is spend this holiday with you. Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for me and you. I longed for this moment to have you for myself in a cabin out. friends, it's Caroline and I am back today with my very first design team project for Country Craft Creation. When Tamara messaged me and asked if I wanted to be on her design team, well, I pretty much just about fell over. <laughs> like I was, this was not on my radar. I was shocked and immediately told her, yes, please. <laughs> and I'm so excited because I am for real, a massive fan girl of all of the CCC designers. So to be included in that group is like, I can't. I just can't. It's amazing. So for today's project, I am making an album that is much larger than any that I've brought to you before. Now, I've, I've made albums of this size by my own, um, but not to share on YouTube or anything like that. And y'all, it turned out so cute. I just hope you like it as much as I do. It is using the White Christmas Collection from Cartabella that's available at Country Craft Creations. And um, I just I just hear Bing Crosby in my head as I'm as I'm flipping through these pages of these papers, and it's just really cute. A quick little thing I wanted to share with you is that the movie White Christmas is you know a big favorite in our household, and my youngest daughter Bella she doesn't call it White Christmas she calls it the Pretty Dress Movie, and I think it's appropriately renamed by her because um, the dresses oh they're so great, right? I mean, just the costumes, the, the costumes, the costumes in that movie, they're just beautiful. And all of the supplies that I'm using today are available at countrycraftcreations.com as well as their new brick and mortar store. Y'all, it's so pretty. I mean, I didn't expect anything less from Tamara, but it is just the most darling store you've ever seen. And I can't wait to go and see it in person. It is in Hooper, Utah, and it is just I mean, it's just fabulous. So if you're in the area, stop by, tell her I said hi, look at all the pretty things, pick up some fun stuff. Um, and if you're like me and unable to travel to Utah today, go ahead and hop on over to the website. I will have a link in the description notes below. All right, let's hop on into this tutorial. It's a fun one. I've already cut all my pieces for the album that we're making today, and I cut those using the black artisan cardstock. Since my video didn't save, I'm going to recut all those pieces, but this time I'm using the gray artisan cardstock, and I'm going to use those to make a second album with some different paper. So disregard the color of the paper for this. I just wanted to at least take you through the cutting process that I do so that you can be as efficient as possible in cutting your cardstock. This is a large album and it does take a lot. So just trying to conserve wherever I can. I'm beginning with a stack of my cardstock. I'm over here at my cutting area and I've got a rough draft of the cutting guide that's gonna be available on my website. I will have a link for that in the description notes below. I've also got a few paper clips here, uh, post-it notes, a pencil, and I'm going to notate as I'm cutting these which section those cut pieces are gonna to correspond to um, with the cutting guide. And that's just gonna help keep me on track for you know organizational purposes, right? So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna go through and I wanna cut all my largest pieces first so that I don't end up with you know not having a big enough piece to cut those from. And I'm gonna begin with the album cover. I'm gonna to need to cut two pieces that are nine by 11 to wrap my front and back covers. 
and I'm going to need a piece that is six by 11 for the spine. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those cuts and I paper clip those together and put a post-it note on it so that I know where those need to, where those belong. And as I'm cutting my pieces and grouping them together in the sections that correspond with the cutting guide, I'm stacking them up upside down so that when I'm done with cutting everything, I turn them around right side and they're in the right order for me to use them. I cut my pages to eight and a half by 12 because it's the larger one. I will have a one inch attachment that's gonna go on here. I'm gonna cut that from the scrap, so I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm gonna set that to the side. And for the page inserts, they need to be nine and a quarter by five and a half. And I don't wanna just start cutting into these papers like that because I wanna find ones that can correspond to that. So there's two places that I can find corresponding ones for that. The first is on pages four and five. I need four pieces that measure six and three eighths by five and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the six and three eighths on those. And once I've got the two that measure six and three eighths here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those to the five and a half in the length. And now that I've got those, I'm gonna go ahead and mark them as pages four and five and set this aside so that um, I'm gonna put that in order once I start getting them all together. But the reason I cut those first is that I'm gonna use the cutoffs of these that measure five and five eighths, and I'm gonna use them to cut two of the pieces of our page inserts. Our page inserts are five and a half by nine and a quarter, and so I'm gonna come over here to the five and a half, I'm gonna cut this little sliver off here, and then nine and a quarter, and now I've got two of the four. For the other two, I'm gonna go ahead and mark those on what they are just so that I don't get confused on this. So these are the page inserts and I've got four of them that are five and a half by nine and a quarter. And for the inside of my front and back cover, I need two pieces that measure six and a quarter by 12. I'm gonna cut those now as well. And the cutoffs for those are what I'm gonna use to make the other two page inserts. So let's go ahead and cut those. So now I've got my two pieces for my inside front and back cover. And the cutoffs, I'm gonna go ahead and cut to five and a half by nine and a quarter for my remaining two page inserts. And now that I have all four page inserts and all four pages, I'm gonna place these together, paper clip them and put them in my stack. As I'm going through, if I complete a section and there's a portion that I still need to cut, I'm just putting a circle around it so that I know when I come back through that that's something I skipped over and I need to use my scraps to cut. And now I'm moving on to the inside of the front and back covers. I've got my waterfall bases already cut because I wanted to cut those so that I could use the cutoffs for the page inserts. If I'm going in order of my cutting guide, which I don't wanna cut them necessarily in order of the cutting guide. The cutting guide is in order of how I want to use them in the construction of the album. So I'm not really concerned with going in that order, but if I were to go in the order, I would go ahead and continue cutting these pieces here for the inside front and back covers. But I wanna wait on those because they're smaller pieces and I wanna see if those are things that I can cut from some scraps. Similarly with the page one, I've got two pieces that are eight and a half by four and a quarter. Those are fairly small pieces <laughs> respectively when I kind of look at the size of everything else. So I'm holding off on that too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna kind of search through and see what my next largest pieces are. And it looks like I've got two that are eight by 12 and then I've got another two here that are eight by 12. And so those are gonna be my next largest pieces that I need to cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all four of those pieces that are eight by 12. And two of them are gonna be for the twist and pops and two of them are gonna be for some booklets that we're making. And so I'm gonna go ahead and notate which pages those belong to. I've marked off that those two have already been cut. And now I'm gonna move on to my next largest pieces. And that's one that's seven and a half by 11. I've got another one here that's eight and a half by six and a half. And I've got another one over here that is seven by six and a quarter. And so, oh, and then there's the eight and a half by four and a quarter. So we've got, we're kind of getting into that mid-size range here. And I don't know that it matters so much at this point, but I am gonna continue to cut my largest pieces first and then go back through and get the rest out of my scraps. Like for the mechanism for my twist and pop, I need four of them that are three inches by 12 inches. So I'm able to go ahead and pull from these. I go ahead and cut these to um, three by 12. These are already three inches, so I just need to leave those as they are. I'm gonna trim this one down to three inches for three by 12. And now I have everything cut with the exception of these waterfall pieces right here. I need 16 of them that are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. 
So if I use a different type of paper trimmer, one that I can drop the blade on, I'm gonna be able to get four of these out of a single sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. Whereas if I were just gonna use my guillotine and start chopping at it, I would only be able to get two from that sheet. I have these scraps over here I could use to cut them out of, but I'm only gonna get one out of each of them. And I may find that I have a future use for these that's better, better used. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all 16 of my pieces from four sheets of cardstock. And this is how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna scooch this over. Now, you can do this, if you have a sharp blade, you don't have to do this portion of it, but I do because I have a really dull blade. Like, it's not even hardly cutting at all. Um, instead of cutting them at six and a quarter, I'm gonna cut them at six and a half by four and a half. And that's just gonna be my initial rough cut. And then I'll take them over to my small guillotine trimmer and clean them up since those edges are gonna be pretty rough like that. So I'm gonna come over here to the six and a half inch mark. I'm gonna take my blade and I'm gonna draw it down until I get to the four and a half inch mark. And then I'm gonna stop right when I get to the four and a half inch mark. I'm gonna turn it to the right. I'm gonna come back to the six and a half inch mark, just like that. And I'm gonna take my blade and I'm gonna bring it down until I get to the four and a half inch mark again. And I keep turning it to the right, going to six and a half, bringing my blade down to four and a half. Last one, I'm gonna come over here to the six and a half and bring my blade down to four and a half. And now I've got this, this kind of weird looking cut here, right? Where I've, I've come to six and a half and I've brought it to four and a half. I've turned it to the right, six and a half, four and a half, just like that. Now I'm gonna flip my paper over and I'm gonna bring it over to the four and a half inch mark and I'm gonna cut down until I meet the cut below it, which is gonna be at six and a half. So I'm gonna take that to the four and a half inch mark and I'm gonna bring it down to that cut that I just made. And now I've got a piece that's four and a half by six and a half. I'm gonna turn it to the right again. I'm gonna to go to the four and a half inch mark. Same thing, bring my blade down to the cut I already made, which is six and a half, four and a half by six and a half. Turn it, take it to four and a half inch mark. Bring my blade down to that, that cut, which is six and a half. And then the last one, if I can get it, it starts kind of getting stuck in things. And then I'm gonna come over here to the four and a half inch mark, bring my blade down, and there we go. Now again, I'm gonna have to go and trim this. If you have a good trimmer, instead of going to the four and a half, you'll be going to the four and a quarter. Instead of going to the six and a half, you'd be going to the six and a quarter. But because um, it's so bad, <laughs> it's the most awful cut here. Because I had that, I just, I'm giving myself an extra quarter of an inch to take over there and trim off so that I've got a little bit of wiggle room there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my other 12 pieces from my three remaining sheets of cardstock and I'll be right back. Right now I've made all of my cuts and I have all 16 of my pieces that for me measure four and a half by six and a half. If you have a better blade in your trimmer, they would be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. I'm gonna now take these and trim them down over at my um, my small guillotine trimmer and you know clean up these rough edges that <laughs> weren't cut great. But it works really well. And um, I didn't have to cut into these other larger scraps, which I could have gotten one each out of these scraps, but that feels like such a waste of paper. These are large enough they could have been used for something else. Now I did wanna give a shout out and a big thank you to Michelle Allen because she is the one who first showed me how to do that, you know, that weird cutting thing where you're able to kind of keep turning it and making those cuts. I believe it was a year or so ago. I'm not sure if I can find her video. I'll link it in the description notes below but she was going through and cutting, I think it was five by seven sheets, um, five by seven pieces out of a 12 inch sheet of uh, cardstock and was able to get four of them out of there. And I thought, well, that's just genius. So <laughs> thank you, Michelle, that was very helpful. Now I've got all my pieces cut and I'm gonna start stacking them up here, you know, in reverse order 
just like this. And then I will take this whole stack over here to my desk and I can just pull from them and work through as we're going through the tutorial. Now, again, these are the gray pieces. I'm gonna begin using these black piece sections that I've already cut for our tutorial today, but um, I don't know why it wasn't recording. So anyway, this is what this is my process. I thought you might find it helpful. Maybe you don't. I will have timestamps in the description notes below. So if there's something that you're like, yeah, that's not, I don't need to see that. You can just click on those timestamps and fast forward through those sections you don't want to watch. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get started on building our album base. We're going to begin by wrapping our chipboard. And I am going to be using the lay flat method that was designed by Tamara Merrill, who is the owner of Country Craft Creations. And I will have her video linked in the description notes below, as well as a video that I made using her method with a few little modifications that I do to it because I'm weird and <laughs> I just have my own little proclivities that I like to do on those. And I'll have that linked in the description notes below as well. So I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly, but you know, not too, too quickly. I do think there's some value in going through it again. For our album base, we're going to have two pieces of chipboard that measure seven inches by nine inches, one that measures nine inches by three inches for our spine. And this one's a little bit different because we are going to have that opening on the front. So you're going to have another piece of chipboard that measures five by seven. And to wrap our chipboard, we're going to need two pieces that measure nine by 11 for our front and back cover, one piece that measures 11 by six for our spine, and one piece that measures seven by nine, and that's going to wrap our little five by seven opening there on the front. I am using artisan cardstock that is exclusively available at countrycraftcreations.com, and I'll have a link in the description notes below on those as well. I like to begin with wrapping my spine because I want to have this wrapped and ready to go and then I like to slip it underneath my mat to allow it to have a place to sit with some pressure on it and to wrap my spine I'm going to place my cardstock in my scoreboard I'm going to use a one inch spacer at the top and a one and a half inch spacer on the side and that's going to give me perfect spacing for our chipboard to be perfectly centered in our piece of 11 by six inch cardstock. And I use liquid adhesive for my construction and that's just my preference. If you prefer to use score sheets or some sort of dry adhesive, you're certainly welcome to do that. I will point out that when using the liquid adhesive on here, the, um, the goal is to get as much coverage as you can without having as much glue as possible. So what I mean is I want a little bit of glue across a lot of area. I have said before in many videos, it's not a lot of glue, it's a lot of coverage. And that's really what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get as even distribution as possible of my adhesive and, um, and just, it just adheres better that way. And then we're just gonna stick it down here. And I'm, I'm pressing it into this corner here where these spacers are so that it's you know perfectly in alignment. I'm gonna remove my spacers, remove it from my scoreboard, and using some sort of a burnishing tool, you're just gonna go over the entire area of the chipboard, really giving some firm but even pressure all the way across. And that's to help sort of spread that adhesive out underneath there. I like to come along with my bone folder to lift up any glue that may have seeped out. Then we're gonna turn it over. I'm gonna go over it one more time with my um, burnishing tool. And then taking my bone folder, I'm gonna run along the edge of that chipboard from the right side of the paper, creating a bit of a crease all the way around before then standing it up and bending it over on itself and giving it a nice firm burnishing to get that crisp crease along those fold lines as we're folding the paper around the chipboard. And then once we've gotten it folded all the way around the chipboard, we're gonna come along here and cut out these rectangles in the corners that were created by that folding process. So I'm just gonna cut right on the fold lines and cut out each of those rectangles in the four corners. And then once those are cut out, we're gonna take each side, we're gonna bend it back over onto the chipboard and holding our scissors up against the edge of the chipboard, we're gonna pivot out ever so slightly just to create a slight miter from that junction there where we have cut out those, um, those rectangles. And so I'm gonna go around just like this and then folding back the opposite sides, we'll trim those down as well. And once I've trimmed up my corners, it's time for us to 
go ahead and glue down the top and bottom pieces here. And I'm just simply gonna take some of my glue and come right up against the edge of that chipboard with a bead of glue, just like that, and then fill in the rest of the flap with some glue so that it will stick down. I'm gonna stand it up, give it a little wiggle, bend it over, smooth it out, clean up any glue that may seep out, and then I'm really kind of pressing that glue to the side, squeezing out any excess that may come out. And that was a lot more than I planned. <laughs> and, but it's just fine. You're just gonna take your bone folder and clean it up. So get that all cleaned up there. And then I like to take my bone folder and run along that edge of the chipboard just to get a nice crisp edge there. So we've got a nice crisp edge here on our, um, our how we've wrapped the paper around our chipboard. And do the other side. And if you like to use a uh, dry adhesive at this point, you certainly may. My only suggestion is go ahead and put a little wet adhesive up here along that edge with the chipboard because I feel like it just really helps it to stay around there. It sort of moistens that paper a little bit. And in my experience, it has helped to reduce any chance of cracking. Of course, with the Artisan, I, I really haven't had any cracking, but um, I do think that it's really helpful. Just that little bit of moisture helps on that. So go ahead and use the dry adhesive, but my suggestion would be, you know, run a bead of glue right along there. So I'm gonna run along this edge again to crisp it up. And I'm very happy with the way that looks. And now I'm gonna flip it over so that the wrapped side is facing up and I'm gonna do the same thing with my bone folder where I'm running it right along the edge of that chipboard and I'm sort of sculpting the paper to wrap around the chipboard and my goal is to have the paper be flush with the underneath side of the chipboard. So I'm gonna go along here and really press that down and as you can see I want the paper to be flush with the underneath side of the chipboard. I'm creating a ridge along here, okay? And that is all we need to do to wrap our spine. I'm gonna put this underneath my mat just to give it a little pressure while it sort of cures. And now we're gonna wrap our front and back covers in a very similar way. We're gonna place our paper in our scoreboard here. And this time we're gonna be using the two one inch spacers at the top and the side. Once I've got my glue on my chipboard, I'm just gonna place it on here and pressing it into this corner right up against these spacers. And that's gonna give me the even spacing that I'm wanting. Take my burnishing tool and really give it a nice firm, you know, going over here. I'm really making sure that if there is any glue that's gonna seep out, it's gonna seep out now. Go around the edges and clean up that glue with your bone folder. And then we're gonna flip it over so that the right side is facing us and take our bone folder and run right along the edge of that chipboard. And this is basically serving in the same way that it would if we were to score the paper. We're just getting the fibers of the paper ready to bend all the way around this chipboard. Once we stand it up and bend it over on itself, I'm gonna give it a nice firm burnishing and really accentuate the crease of that fold, pressing it out and really getting a nice sharp crease there. I'm gonna do that on all four sides. And once that part's been completed, we're gonna go around and cut these squares out of each corner, the squares that were created through the folding process. Once the squares have been removed, we're gonna fold one side back around the back side of the chipboard and placing our scissors up against the edge of the chipboard, we're gonna come to that little junction where that square was and we're gonna come out at a very slight angle just to sort of clean it up. I'm gonna go around and do that on all four corners. So it's gonna be a total of eight cuts. You've got two for each corner. Once we've cleaned up those corners in that way, I like to do an extra step. I just like to reduce some of the bulk from the corners. So I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna miter these corners as well using a mitering tool. And once that's completed, we end up with something that looks kind of like this. It's a mitered corner with a little notch cut out of it. We're gonna finish our wrapping very similarly to how we did for our spine piece. We're going to run some liquid glue right up along the edge of that chipboard and fill in for the rest of the paper here and then stand it up, give it a little wiggle before bending it over on itself and really giving it a nice firm burnishing. Clean up any glue that may seep out and really kind of squeegeeing the glue out from underneath the paper. I'm trying to get the glue as evenly distributed as possible 
cleaning up any that may seep out and then running my bone folder along that edge of the chipboard to give us a nice crisp clean edge for our wrapping if you can see that i think it looks great <laughs> so now i there's no reason for this i just like to do opposite sides i don't know i'm a creature of habit um you can do this in any order you want there's no rules on which sides to do but I'm going to go to the opposite side here and do the same thing. And once we finish wrapping my uh, chipboard for my front and or back cover, whichever one this ends up being, I'm going to slip it underneath my cutting mat, go ahead and wrap the other one, and I'll be right back. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap the chipboard piece that is going to be for our kind of front cover element here. I've got a piece of 5 by 7 chipboard, a piece of 7 by 9 cardstock, and I'm going to wrap it in the exact same way that I wrapped my front and back covers. Last year I thought of how things can come around just like that If everyone is here to celebrate one day We have our ups and downs But when there's love there's always a way And oh this time of year We come together to celebrate Yes every time the snow is falling down And it is cold Once that one is wrapped, I'm going to place it under my cutting mat and retrieve the other three pieces. And now we're going to assemble our front and back covers to our spine. And the reason that we came along here and, you know, created that ridge along those edges with those wings, our front and back covers are going to attach to our spine right there along that ridge. And we're simply going to place glue about a quarter of an inch from the edge of that ridge that we just created there. So we're going to run a line about a quarter of an inch away from that that ridge and then we're going to fill in on the rest of this wing here and again it's not a lot of glue but it is a lot of coverage so we're going to get this all covered with glue and then take a small bead of glue about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of one of your front and or back covers here the edge that's going to attach to that spine i'm just coming all along here i'm going to put a little dollop there a little dollop there. Anywhere that I feel like I've gotten a little too close, I'm going to come back with my thumbnail and just sort of draw that glue back. And then it is going to go right up next to the ridge of that spine, the chipboard of the spine. And we're just going to lower it into place. And you know you're in the right place if you press down and it sort of lifts it up. I'm right next to that chipboard. Just their butt right up next to each other. Give it a nice burnishing from the front side, flip it over, and I'm going to burnish from the back side. Careful not to press the glue into that junction there between the two pieces of chipboard. I don't want any glue in between that space there, but I'm definitely pressing all the glue back down along here and getting it really, really stuck down. Clean up any glue that may have seeped out. Really pressing that out. I'm going to open this up to check to make sure I don't have any glue in between here, and I don't. And then I'm just going to take a couple clamps and hold this in place. I just I just want those corners there to really be um, adhered down straight, okay? And not for a long time, just really long enough for me to put glue on the other wing. And running a bead of glue, again, an eighth of an inch away from the edge of my other piece of chipboard. Gonna remove my clamps. Lay this down so it's butt right up next to, I've got the chipboard right up next to the corresponding chipboard of the spine. Laying it down, really squeezing it out from this side. Gonna flip it over. Press it out from the other side 
and I'm being really mindful to make sure I'm pressing the glue to the top and the bottom and not to the sides. Check to make sure I didn't have any glue seeping out between there and I didn't. I'm very happy with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and put some clamps on this one as well. And while that's sitting there, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare the piece that's gonna cover the spine from the inside of the album. And to cover the inside of the album, to kind of give it a little extra strength and to cover up this, um, these seams here, I have cut a piece that is a scant nine inches tall by eight and a half inches wide. Why eight and a half inches wide? Well, I was using these eight and a half by 11 sheets of uh, score tape. So <laughs> that's what sort of determined my width. You can do it however wide you want. I just suggest you come out past where these wings are so that you don't create too much bulk there at that junction, right? Um, and so anyway, the nine inches tall, it's a scant nine inches, so it's not quite nine inches. And I'm feeling with my fingers to sort of center it and make sure I've got it placed on there where I want it to be. And once I've got it where I want it to be, I'm going to peel back a little section of my tape here using my brand new pokey tool that my very good friend gave to me as an early birthday present. Thank you, Rhea. And I love it. Look at the small size. Okay, I've digressed. It's so cute, isn't it? And so I'm going to place this on here with the scant nine inches, you know, going top to bottom. And I'm just sort of hovering above here, feeling to make sure I'm centered. And once I've got it where I want it to be, I'm going to press that adhesive you know, that sticky corner down, the one that I've just sort of opened up there to reveal the sticky side. Reach under and peel back the remaining uh, part of the adhesive, the backing for the adhesive so that I can expose that and then lay it all down. I'm gonna really burnish this. I wanna make sure I have no air bubbles between here. I want complete full contact on all of this. And I'm gonna, once I've got it all kind of press down the way I like. I'm going to start going back and forth here at this junction between the uh, back cover and the spine. And I'm really working that, uh, that seam there. And so once I've got that where I want it to be and it's functioning the way I want it to, I'm going to turn it around, do the same thing on the other side. And there you have it. We now have our front and back cover attached to our spine and our album base is finished. We're going to set this aside and we're going to start working on our hinges. Now for our hinges, we're going to begin with a piece that measures eight and a half by nine inches. And we're going to place it in our scoreboard with the nine inch side at the top. And we're going to score at three eighths of an inch one and one eighth of an inch, one and seven eighths of an inch, two and five eighths of an inch, three and three eighths of an inch, four and one eighth of an inch, four and seven eighths of an inch, five and five eighths of an inch, six and three eighths of an inch, seven and one eighth of an inch, seven and seven eighths, and eight and five eighths. And what that is gonna give us is it's gonna give us a three quarter inch high hinge with a three quarter inch wide gusset between each hinge. And at the beginning and the end of our hinges, we're gonna have a three eighths of an inch gusset. Now what I have done on this one is I've gone along and I've scored in all of the places that I just told you. And that's gonna be for my valleys. I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna score at one and one eighth at three and three eighths, at five and five eighths, and at seven and seven eighths. And that's gonna be for our hinge folds. It's gonna be for the mountain folds. So the first pass I went over everything. The second pass I went over and scored a second time from the reverse side at one and one eighth, at three and three eighths, at five and five eighths, and at seven and seven eighths, okay? And then we're gonna begin a series of mountain and valley folds. The first and the last score mark are gonna be valley folds. And so we're gonna fold those kind of up on itself. If you find you have a prop, you know, it's, if it's hard to get that 3 eighths of an inch, sometimes if you stand it up on itself and bend it over, I find that I get a little bit more leverage. And in fact, I like to go ahead and fold and burnish those first because they're smaller and I just feel like I get a little bit more um, 
control over them that way. And then it doesn't matter which direction you want to go from from here, you're going to fold a mountain fold and that's going to be for our first hinge. Okay. And then two valley folds, that's going to be for either side of the gusset. And as I'm doing this, I'm making sure that my sides are lined up with each other. So, you know, I'm sort of checking to make sure that this and this are lined up flush with one another, giving it a really nice firm burnishing. I wanna make sure I've creased that very well. And then we're gonna do a mountain fold. This is for our second hinge, followed by two valley folds for the gusset. Mountain fold for our third hinge. Two valley folds for our gusset. and a mountain fold for our fourth hinge. And then when we sort of bring them all together in the way that they're meant to be, we're gonna end up with a hinge system here that is three quarters of an inch tall hinges with three quarters of an inch wide gussets between. And I like to make my gussets and my hinge height the same because then they nestle into each other and it's a way for me to double check and make sure that I have everything straight and true because if your hinges are crooked or if they're going off on a tangent at any point, your pages are gonna be crooked also. And this is a larger album. In fact, this is a much larger album than I usually do. And when you have longer lengths of things that are slightly askew, it is more dramatically seen. So if I've got a long piece that's off by a tiny bit, it's going to translate to a much more acute tangent that it's going to really be able to resonate that it's off than if I had a small piece that was off by a little bit. You're not going to notice as much. Also, these pages are quite large, and because of that, I've decided to do the three quarters of an inch hinge so that I have more for the page to attach to. I feel like it's just gonna be a much more secure attachment. By the time we add all of our decorations and embellishments and photographs and whatever it is we wanna put in here, these pages are gonna get pretty heavy. Having that three quarters of an inch hinge to attach to is just gonna give it a lot more tooth, a lot more of something to grab onto and make it more secure in my experience. So now that we've completed all of our folding and burnishing, we're gonna begin gluing our hinges together and we're gonna flip it over to the back side. And on each of these hinges, we're gonna place glue all along that three quarters of an inch section. And we're only placing the glue on one of the pieces that's gonna to glue together. There's no reason to put glue on both pieces. It's, they're gonna get put together just fine this way. And so once I've got all of my glue down on this section here, I'm simply gonna you know, follow the fold that we just folded and, and burnished there. And I'm gonna kind of go over it lightly at first clean up any that might seep out. And then I'm gonna really, really press it. I'm gonna just burnish it really firm, squeeze out any glue that is gonna seep out at the top or bottom, and really get that together so it is a completely laminated piece. So not only do we have a three quarters of an inch long hinge to attach to, but we've got a really secure hinge. I mean, this is a double thick of paper there with the glue in between. That's a very secure bond. I'm gonna go back and forth, 
pressing this out. And do you see what I mean? Now I know that it's going to be straight because it's nestling in there in that little groove with the corresponding um, uh, gusset. So I've got my first hinge glued up. I'm going to go to the second one, place glue all along this three quarters of an inch section, and then glue it together in the same way. Kind of lightly lay it down to begin with. Get a little burnishing. And then I'm going to really press and squeeze any glue out as I'm really making sure that there is a complete bond there between those two pieces of glue. I want them to become a singular unit. Going back and forth. And see how I can just lay it into that gusset area. I know that it's straight. And we are doing really well on that. I'm going to go ahead and glue up the other two and I'll be right back. And now that our hinges are all glued up and they look really great, um, they're moving wonderfully, they're nice and straight, I'm very happy with them, you could go ahead and attach these into your album at this point. And you would simply put glue all over the back side here where all these gussets are, center it top to bottom. It's going to fill up the full width of your spine because this is three inches wide now and it's going to fill up right there in that whole width of the spine and you could glue it down or you can do what I'm going to show you which is to add a gusseted hinge attachment so that the pages are going to be able to pull away from the spine of the book. I find that it adds a lot of strength to the pages because you don't have that stress at that one point where it's really trying to move. And these are very loaded pages. These are going to be highly, <laughs> heavily embellished loaded pages. And so I just want to be able to have that, um, that articulation, that movement capability on there. And like I said, if you want to attach it just like this, you simply would, you know, go ahead and glue it down and stick it down and you're good to go. I'm going to show you how to do a gusseted hinge attachment and you can choose to do that if you want. Another thing I want to point out, whether you're doing the hinge attachment or just fixing it directly to the spine, this is three inches across. However, in the process of folding and burnishing, sometimes the fibers stretch a little bit and you may find that this is a little bit wider than you want it to be. If that's the case, you can simply just trim off a very you know, slight bit from either side to make it even, and it's gonna go on there just fine. I'm looking at this one and it's just where I want it to be. I'm not. It's not catching in any place with the opening and closing of my album. I want it to come all the way to that edge. I think it's just easier for me. I don't have to worry about centering it left and right, specifically because when you're trying to center something left and right, there is a tendency that it might be off a little bit top and bottom. And if that's the case, if I've got too much wiggle room in there, I could end up with, even though I tried really hard to get all my hinges straight, I could still end up with crooked pages because if I don't attach my hinge unit on here straight, then they're going to be crooked too. So I do like to have that the same, the exact same width as the chipboard of the spine. And that way I know that this is going to be absolutely parallel to that every time because I don't have an option to put it on any other way. It, it fills up the whole space. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> so for the gusseted hinge attachment, we're going to start with a piece that measures six and a half by eight and a half. And we're going to place it in on the six and a half inch side in our scoreboard. And we're going to score it at one and a half, one and five eighths, one and three quarters, four and three quarters, four and seven eighths, and five. And what that's going to give us is it's going to give us a one and a half inch section on either side. We've got a series of eighth of an inch score marks here that are going to be folded in an accordion fashion and a three inch section across the center that our hinges are going to be glued down onto. So again, we're going to score that at one and a half, one and five eighths, one and three quarters, four and three quarters, four and seven eighths, and five. Okay, and these are going to be folded in a series of mountain and valley folds. It's gonna be mountain, valley, mountain, mountain, valley, mountain. And I have found that with these tiny little square folds that we're gonna be doing, it's only eighth of an inch wide, it's easier if I fold all of my mountain folds first. So that's gonna be the first and the last on either side of these series of three score marks. We're gonna, we're gonna fold that in a mountain fold. And once we've folded all of our mountain folds, you're gonna end up with this sort of rectangular tube 
here like this. And I'm gonna place this down, I'm gonna hold this flap, one of the one and a half inch flaps here, I'm gonna hold it with my fingers on one side, and I'm gonna take my scoring tool and I'm just gonna gently run back and forth along that center score mark on either side and sort of allowing that to um, start moving itself in. I have found that it really helps in getting these accurate folds along here. And um, the paper is sort of taking the path of least resistance. It's gonna start folding down upon itself. And once I can feel it start to give like that, I'm just gonna take my fingers and run along here and I'm just gonna pinch those together so that I've got the mountain fold. Each of the mountain folds are gonna meet each other, flush with each other all along this edge. So I'm just gonna kind of go along here and just give it a little pinch, bringing that down to, uh, to meet the corresponding mountain fold there. And once I've got that in place, I'm just gonna come along with my bone folder and really give it a nice firm burnishing and sort of set that, um, that fold just, just the way we want it, okay? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna hold on to this flap here, applying light pressure from the top as I run my bone folder or my scoring tool or whatever it is that works best for you, right along that center score mark here, just sort of following it around there, and it's gonna start falling into place. And once it does, that's when I'm gonna come along here and just sort of pinch those two, uh, those two mountain folds on top of each other. I'm gonna come all along here and continue pinching and I'll be right back. And once we've got that in place, we're gonna end up with a piece that looks like this. We've got these little accordion folds on the sides that are gonna give it some, some movement. And then we've got these two flaps here that we're gonna to use to attach to the spine. So the next step is gonna to be to open it back up and we're gonna place glue all along the back side of our hinges and glue that down here to the center section of the uh, of the hinge attachment system here. And for this step, I just like to hold my hinges um, just like this kind of in between my fingers. And I'm gonna take my glue and run all along the backside of all of these gussets. And if you are not gonna use the hinge attachment, if you don't want it to pull away from the spine in that way, you would simply do the same thing I'm doing right now where you're placing the glue all along the backside of the hinges and you're gonna glue it directly down onto the spine. And that would be your kind of fixed hinges there. They would be fixed on the spine. And once I've got the glue all over the back of that, I'm simply just gonna lay it down on top of the center section, or you would lay it down on top of the, um, on the spine of, of, your, of your album, right? And it's so nice that it's exactly the same size, the exactly the same width as this center section, or which is also the same width as my um, as my spine because I don't have to worry about lining that up left and right. I'm just gonna come along here and burnish this all down, making sure that I've got really good at contact all along here where that fold is. And I'm coming from both sides doing that because sometimes you've got a little more pressure kind of pushing to the right or the left and this just ensures that I've really got even contact with all of that, um, all of my hinges there. And then I'm gonna lay all my hinges down kind of into those gussets, flip them back the other way, do the same thing, lay them into the, um, lay the hinges into the gussets. I'm gonna come over from the back side and I'm gonna come over it really well from the back side too. And then we are good to go. We have attached our hinges to our hinge attachment system. And all I need to do now is just come along and refold or kind of just repress those gusseted folds here on the sides. And the good thing about doing them beforehand is that the fiber sort of has a memory now and it goes right back to where it needs to be. We and now have our hinges attached to our hinge attachment system and it's gonna be able to pull away from the spine just like this. Any of this little bits of glue here, we're gonna be able to clean up later on. I like to let them dry all the way first, and then I'm gonna hit it with one of these little rubber erasers and it will come right off. And now it's time to attach our hinges to our spine. And we're gonna do that by placing some glue on one of these one and a half inch sections. And the same way we did for the hinges, I want this glue to come all along this entire section. Not a lot of glue, but a lot of coverage. Once we've got all of our glue on there, we're gonna place it down onto our, um, 
onto our spine and I'm coming all the way to the edge of the chipboard on the spine here. I'm really scooching it all the way to the edge and I'm centering it top to bottom. So I've got about a quarter of an inch at the top and about a quarter of an inch at the bottom. And once I've got that where I want it to be, I'm just gonna give it a really firm burnishing, really squeezing all of this down, making sure that I've got good contact, cleaning up any glue that may have seeped out. Looks good. Looks great. And then on the other one, we're just gonna do the same thing, come along here and place glue all along this little piece here. Once we've got all of our glue on there, we're just gonna kind of take it down. I'm sort of sliding it over and it's gonna butt up against that corresponding piece that we just glued down. And that's gonna give me perfect alignment, perfect placement on here. I'm not worried about anything being off center in any way at all coming all the way to the edge there of that chipboard. And there you have it. Pressing it down kind of through the gussets of the hinges. And then I'm also gonna take this other bone folder that's a little longer and I'm gonna kind of come in between and just give it a little pressing from that side as well. Just really kind of reaching in here. Make sure I've got good contact. And I do. And so now that we've got our hinges attached to the spine and I've used my gusseted hinge attachment here, I'm really happy with the way they look and it's time for us to move on to the pages. And for the pages, we're gonna need four pieces that measure eight and a half by 12 and four pieces that measure one and a half by eight and three quarters. And we're gonna begin with the pieces that measure eight and a half by 12 and place them in your scoreboard on the 12 inch side and we're gonna score them at six and a half inches. We're gonna score all four of them that way. And then we're gonna fold and burnish all of our score marks. And then once we've folded and burnished our score marks, we're gonna add this little attachment here onto it to make it so that it is a page that is gonna measure six and a half by eight and a half. And what I have done here is I've created the attachment piece that is longer than the height of my pages. And I did that on purpose. I want some hanging over on the top and the bottom when I attach that so that I can trim it down to fit precisely. It's really hard to cut it the exact same length and glue it in the exact same way. And I have found that if I just cut it a little bit longer and trim it down, trim it to fit, it's always gonna fit and be more of a custom fit in that regards. So how I'm gonna do this is for each of these page units here that I've scored at six and a half, I'm going to attach one piece that's one and a half inches wide and that's gonna make up for that one inch difference that I have on the width. I'm lining it up with the edge of my paper that was scored at the six and a half inch mark, okay? So I've got that right on top of there. And then this one is gonna come down over the top of that and glue into place. How I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna place some glue on the edge of the flap, the remaining flap that's five and a half inches wide. And I'm gonna come down about a quarter of an inch with my glue here. And then on this one, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna come along the edge of my one and a half inch wide piece, and I'm gonna come in almost a quarter of an inch with my glue, just like that. I'm gonna line it up so that the edge of this piece here meets the edge of the piece below. So this edge right here is lined up. And then I'm just gonna close this over on itself, and that glue is gonna cover the area that I need it to. Go ahead and give it a light burnishing at first and then a much more firm burnishing once it sort of takes hold, once it has some tooth to it there. Clean up any glue that may be seeping out. I'm gonna open it up and give it a burnishing from the inside also. And if there's any glue seeping out from this side, we'll clean that up. And now our piece is the right you know, width all the way across. And all we need to do is just trim off these little overhangs here. And you can do that with a pair of scissors. I'm gonna choose to put it in my trimmer here and I'm just lining it up. I'm using two fingers, I'm using two points of contact here to you know, push this up against. So I know that I'm, I'm straight there along that edge. 
And once I've got that lined up on the cutting edge where I want it to be, then I'm just gonna drop my blade and it's just gonna cut off this little bit here, but it's the perfect height then for that page. I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing for the other side. Cut off this other little bit here. And now I've got my page ready to insert into my album. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the remaining three page units here. This year I'll think about how I'm so lucky to have a place that I can come home to. Yes, I am on my way. We'll put our differences aside. Now that we've got that done, we can start placing them into our album. And I like to begin at the back of the hinges. I'm going to take one side here, open it up. I'm going to take one side, I'm going to press it up against the um, kind of that joint there where the hinge meets the, the gusset area. And I'm lining it up so I've got top and bottom all lined up there, making sure it's all the way up against that laying it in place and I'm looking all around to see if I have an even reveal all the way around here and I do it this was a little crooked when I cut the paper so don't count that but um, I do have an even reveal all the way around and I'm very happy with the way that looks and so I'm going to open it back up just like this place some glue on the hinge about three quarters of the way down Place some glue right along the edge of the page. And then I'm just gonna fold this. Oops, I wiggled it. Well, if you wiggle it, this is what you do. <laughs> you place it back up against kind of in that little, in that place where that comes together. Fold it back over itself. I'm double checking to make sure that everything is still even reveal all the way around. Looks good. And I'm very happy with that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just burnish it down. Making sure I've got good contact all along there, and I do. That looks great. And now I'm gonna put glue on the other side of the hinge, coming about three quarters of the way down from the, from the top of the hinge, from this fold line here that I'm running along, along the hinge here. I'm coming about three quarters of the way down. And then I'm going to take some glue along the bottom of my page, just like that. And I'm going to run some glue along the edge of this page here, just like this. And then once that closes over on top of it, I'm kind of gently at first, and then I will be a little bit more firm with my burnishing really pressing that into place, making sure I've got full contact all along this hinge and that the bottom of my page is sealed up pretty well. Really pressing out any glue that may seep out. And that's gonna create a pocket for our page so we can have a page insert on here too. Open it back up this way, a little burnishing. up any glue that may be seeping out along this edge here and there we go we've got our page inserted and now we're going to move on to the next page and doing the same thing I'm going to open up my page unit here I'm going to place it against the edge of where the hinge attaches to the the base here close it back over onto it and right now I'm making sure that everything is straight with the page below. I've got top and bottom, those are even. And um, just making sure I've got an even reveal all the way around and that the page is on here correctly. And once it's positioned where I want it to be, I'm gonna open it up, take my glue, 
place it on my hinge here about three quarters of the way down. Come along with some glue right along the edge of that page. And then just make sure we've got the glue all the way to the edge, right? Go ahead and close that back on over on itself. I'll double check to make sure that I'm straight all around. I am. Looks good. Go ahead and give it a firm burnishing. And then I'm gonna take glue and put it on the other side of the hinge, about three quarters of the way down, across the bottom, and across this little edge here that's gonna come over and attach to the hinge. Just like that. The whole thing gets closed over on itself. Just kind of gently rub it at first. Almost, I, I kind of feel like the warmth from my hand sort of helps just holding it over on there for a little bit and then I'm going to burnish it a little more firmly making sure I've got good contact across the bottom same thing from both sides and there we go so now I've got two of my pages um, inserted right now and as you can see those are those are on there really well I'm going to get the other two put on and I'll be right back it means so much more got all of our pages in our album and I think they look really great. This uh, gusseted hinge attachment system is going to allow them to pull away from the spine and so when we get a lot of bulk on here it's going to allow the pages to actually lay flat and have some movement right to left even as we're turning them and it just it gives a little ease to that construction you know as you can sort of see even here that will sort of lift away from the the spine and it just it gives it a little bit more movement and um, and yeah I love it I think it looks great the next step that I like to take is to go ahead and make my page inserts to go in here not only does it just you know checks off one of the to-do things on the list and making the album but it gives me a visual reference a visual reminder for where the top of the album is and I have found that it saves me from putting in things upside down which I had a tendency to do a lot of before I started doing that. So for the page inserts I'm going to need four pieces that measure five and a half by nine and on those pieces I've decided I want to add a little edging at the top. This is optional you don't have to do it. Um, this is just a punch that I had in my stash. Use what you have or don't use it at all. It's honestly not even necessary. It's just something that I thought, you know, was a nice little addition. So that's what I've decided to do. And once I've, you know, put my little punches to my border here and I'm happy with that, I also rounded the corners at the bottom. And then we're just gonna insert these into our album. And I love the way it looks. I think it's great having this sort of peek out of the top here. And more importantly, I'm not gonna put anything in upside down, or at least I shouldn't be putting anything upside down because I know where the top of my album is. Now, I am going to put some pattern paper on these, but I like to wait till towards the end of building the album so I can use scraps for that. So we're just going to go ahead and move on with decorating our front of our album and getting those pieces ready, or at least getting them ready to put on before we move on to the interior of the pages. Now for my album closure, I'm going to do a ribbon tie closure here. And so I'm going to attach that first. I'm going to cut two pieces of ribbon that are 16 inches long each. And that's probably longer than they need to be, but I'd rather them be a little bit longer than too short. We can always trim them down once we've got everything put in place. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and put some tape down. And we're just going to tape down our ribbons for our closure before we start putting everything on our front and back covers. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up on my, um, my cutting mat here and I'm going to find my center. I'm going to place some tape down here roughly at the center. 
peel off my backing using my awesome little pokey tool. Take my piece of ribbon here and I'm gonna line that up with the center of my um, album. And I'm coming in, oh gosh, about an inch or so, making sure that my ribbon is about an inch into the album here. I'm also trying to be mindful of if that if it's on here crooked, and it actually is on here a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna try to peel it off. We're gonna try to go at this again. I'm trying to get this to lay as straight as I can. There we go. And that's just gonna help with you know how it looks when we go to tie it. And now I'm gonna take another piece of tape and go right over the top of that, sandwich it right in there. And I'm gonna actually take another piece since it's sticking out. I've got a little tail sticking out here. Sort of helps smooth it out. And now for the other side, I'm not even gonna try to line it up on the mat or anything because I don't need it to be lined up on the mat. I just need it to be lined up with the corresponding ribbon over here. So this one's a little bit easier. I'm just gonna take some tape, place it down. Make sure you burnish it really well. You don't want any air bubbles in there. Peel off the backing. And then this time I'm gonna take my ribbon and I'm just lining it up with the ribbon below because it doesn't really even matter if it's necessarily straight on the album. I need it to be straight with its counterpart below here. So once I've got that where I want it to be, I'm just gonna press it into that adhesive. Take another piece of tape, go over the top, and we are good to go. And now you can see how it would be really easy to find myself in a position where my album was upside down because I'm sitting here going, okay, that's the front of the album, but it's not. And now I know that because I've got my little um, page insert sticking out reminding me, Caroline, that's not the front of the album. <laughs> and I appreciate them for the reminder. All right, so now let's go ahead and open this up and let's put our pattern paper on our front and back cover and spine. I, I'm kind of doing some dry fitting. I'm just sort of laying out some ideas that I have in my mind before I just jump all in and start <laughs> committing to it completely. And some of the things that I was thinking about doing here, well, first of all, when I saw this collection, I knew immediately that I wanted this scene on the spine. I thought it was super cute. And so, you know, I laid it out on here, found out the, you know, wanted to get all the elements that I wanted in here. I just love this sleigh going over the bridge here. They're going over the river and through the woods. It's so cute. And the deer and all the houses. And you just know it's cozy and warm in there, right? So <laughs> I just love that so much. Since that's really busy, I wanted to sort of balance it out with something that was a little bit more neutral, but had more interest than just a solid color. So I chose to use this paper here, the, the green one that has the the uh, wagons on there with the tree on it on one side and then on the other side there's all of this text that reads wishing you a merry christmas happy holidays seasons greetings and i thought that it added some really nice visual context on there but it's a little bit i don't know it's a little it's a little blah right and i need to sort of tie it in well this is what i was thinking i would do i'm gonna put on the front of my album i'm gonna have a little sort of door opening and inside you'll be able to put whatever you want. Maybe it treat it as a card. If it's a gift, maybe just treat it with a little bit of journaling about what's inside the book. I don't know. It's a whole new, it's a whole new concept for me. I don't even know what I'm doing. This might not even make the cut. I, I still don't know yet. But on the opposite side of this paper, of this print here is this really cute ticking stripe. While I love the stripe, I didn't necessarily want it to be vertical or horizontal. I want it to be at an angle. So what I've done is I've laid out my chipboard piece here that I covered and I held it up to the light. You know, I mean, I held it up like this to the light. You guys can't see that, but I was, I was holding it up. Well, maybe you can, maybe, here, hold on. Okay, this isn't necessarily the best angle, but I wanna sort of show you how I did this. I held this up to the light so that I could see the stripes through the paper here, right? And what I did is I lined up one corner with the opposite corner at an angle on just, I, I just picked a, a certain stripe and I lined it up with there so that it would go from corner to corner. And then, let me get my light back where it's supposed to be. <laughs> and then I drew around it with a pencil mark. If you can see the pencil mark that I drew around here. And that's what I'm gonna cut out and then I'll trim it down a little bit so that it will fit on there. It's a little bit of a waste of paper, you know. I'm not I'm not gonna lie, it is. I'm I've got all these pieces here that aren't gonna make the cut. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my goodness, why is that so funny? Um, that was really punny. I don't know why I'm laughing so hard at that. Anyway, I have these pieces that aren't going to be a part of it, and so it does feel a little bit wasteful, but I'm, you know, look, I'm a scrappy card maker, so I will make use of these little pieces here, and this one, I kind of scooted it over to a different line because I can still capture this scene here with the sleigh going over the bridge that I love so much. And so who knows, I'll, I'll find a place for that somehow, I'm sure. So now I'm just gonna cut this out with my scissors and then I'll trim it up and kind of square it up a little bit using my uh, paper trimmer. But I don't wanna cut into places here that I don't need to cut into. I don't wanna take this to my paper trimmer and cut all the way through, because then I've wasted all the paper, right? I'm just gonna cut out around my pencil marks and then we'll trim it up. And now I've got this really nice diagonal stripe. I think it's gonna give a little bit of movement to my design and kind of help it flow a little bit better. And then once I put my focal point and my book plate and all of that stuff on there, this is gonna be what's peeking out around the sides. One of the things that I learned way back when I was doing a lot of quilting was that when you're playing with patterns and you get to a pattern that's super busy, don't necessarily shy away from it. Consider what's going to go on top of it or consider how it could be used to frame something. Sometimes these stripes can, you know, they're almost, uh, they'll create an effect with your eye, right? Especially if you're dealing with colors that might be complementary colors or something where it creates a vibration on the page. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It just needs to be done in moderation. So a lot of times I would take a stripe fabric when I was doing quilting and I would use that to make my seam binding or my bias binding for my quilt because you would cut it on the bias or on an angle and it would create this really cool kind of, you know, barbershop, uh, what is it, barber pole stripe, you know, that kind of turns or like a candy stripe that's in an angle. I'm not using the right terms, but you guys know what I mean. And it would create this really nice effect around there and movement. That's what I'm trying to mimic here by doing this with this angled piece. And so, yes, I know it seems kind of wasteful, but if I'm to put something else over it, some sort of a pattern over it, well, then you've got this part peeking out and it's not quite as you know, bold and in your face, but you still get that effect of that sort of that vibration or that movement from that pattern. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> this is something I kind of geek out about. I love playing with different sizes of, of scales of patterns, different colors, using a color wheel to make sure that I'm using like complementary colors if I want something to really pop. Those are things that I really like to do and I understand maybe not everybody gets into that, um, but I wanted to kind of go over why I chose to do something so bold here and that we're gonna kind of tame it down a little bit. You know, even if this were, let's say if this wasn't the same winter scene and I came across with this, this is also a busy pattern. As long as I were to take some sort of a solid, um, pattern to go around that, then that's going to even make that seem, make sense. So when you're working with a bunch of patterns, bright patterns or busy patterns or whatever, don't, uh, my advice would be don't shy away from them. Find a way to use them so they can bring a little energy, a little zip, a little pep to your project. All right. That's my little, that's my little tip that I'm going to throw in there. <laughs> it's late at night and I am just, I'm punchy at this point. So you guys will have to excuse me. All right, so I'm sort of laying this out. I like the way this looks. I'm not really sure where this is gonna keep going. I'm thinking I need some sort of a bow or something up here, um, probably with the red to tie that in. And I feel like I need a, something a little bit red down here to ground that. As you guys probably know, if you've watched my videos, I like to come right up to the edge of it. I, I just, I like the way it looks. It's just a personal style preference. And so I have cut this piece as an eighth of an inch smaller in width and height than my album. So my album is nine by seven. I've cut this piece here at six and seven eighths by eight and seven eighths. And I've done the same thing for, you know, all of them. I just came in an eighth of an inch smaller for the base matting piece. I cut these at six and five eighths by eight and five eighths. And then I cut the matting pieces that go underneath them a sixteenth of an inch larger than that. So just a smidge, just a tiny, teeny, tiny little bit bigger than that. And as you can see, when that goes on there, it just creates this almost shadow effect and that very thin reveal of that black line just helps to sort of ground that paper. And I, I just like the way that looks. 
I did the same thing for the others in, in the same way. I'm gonna kind of keep playing around with this and figure out how I want this to look and I'll be right back. All right, now I've sort of got this laid out the way I think I want it. I still wanna put some other matting around here. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do some of that. So what I want to do now is I want to actually harvest some paper from all of this that's not ever gonna get seen. So the back of this, no one's ever gonna see that. And I know that I wanna put a white mat around at least one of these and maybe even uh, carry the green up into here too. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut out a centerpiece from those because you're never gonna see it. So in order to conserve paper here, what I did was I cut windows out of my matting pieces. So here's my first matting layer, and then I went ahead and cut the center out of that, and I'm using that then for this matting layer and for this matting layer. So out of this one piece of the white shimmer cardstock, I was able to get three matting pieces for it. And the same thing with the black matting layer. So out of this one, I was able to cut this piece as well as this piece. And from the green pattern paper one, I was able to cut this one out. So that way I didn't have to cut into multiple pieces of paper. I just used the one that you weren't gonna see that paper anyway. It was gonna be hiding underneath all the layers anyway. And so I wanted to be able to do that. I'm gonna ink my edges, glue it up, lay it all in place, and I'll meet you back here once I've sort of tweaked the rest of my, uh, my front and back cover and spine. <laughs> Every time the snow is falling down And it is cold outside We gather around the fireplace And no one cares about yesterday cutting the centers out because you want to, you know, save this paper, right? Or use it for something else. If you are concerned that it will have a dip or that it won't be flush, just get a, you know, a lesser expensive piece of paper. This is just some really cheap cardstock, 110 pound cardstock that I had in my stash that is, you know, a similar weight to the one I'm cutting out. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay it inside of there and I'm going to come around with some double-sided tape to, um, sort of connect it and you know it's almost like an inlay I'm I'm placing it in the in the middle of this and there's a couple reasons to do this one is like I said if you want to keep them level you don't want to have it where it's like a thickness that's dipping down or something like that into it this is going to work great for that but also it's really great for um, keeping it straight because when you start cutting out these sort of frames that paper is wiggling a lot and I struggled just a little bit with this one and putting it down on the black one here because it wanted to bow out over here and I can see it and now that I've pointed it out you can probably see it too <laughs> but um and it's not it's not bad I don't think anybody else would notice if, if I hadn't pointed it out but in order to keep that all straight when you're laying it down and kind of wiggling it around to fit it this is a way to solve that so that you don't have that issue um and it, it just works really well. None of this is necessary though, right? Like <laughs> literally none of this is necessary. These are just little tricks that I'm coming up with or have tried and have worked for me when I'm sort of doing this process. I am not so worried about using this solid colored paper up, but you know, this paper is like more than a dollar a sheet. So <laughs> I wanted to harvest some of it out if I could and use it somewhere else. I'm, I'm just really frugal like that. So once I peel all of this off, I'll be able to glue down my other, my matting piece that goes on top of it. And I could harvest, you know, I could cut some out of the center of this one. I'm not going to, I'm just gonna keep it solid, that's fine. It'll add to some structural um, integrity for it. But I'm just gonna go ahead and put my glue around here, stick it down. 
And now it looks exactly like it would have if I had just glued the black piece on top of the white piece. It's ex it's perfectly flush. You can't tell that there's been anything, you know, cut out of it. <laughs> but I got this piece of paper out of it. So I'm going to be able to use this and I'm probably going to use it on the inside of this little opening flap here. So it's just, you know, it's me being really cheap. <laughs> We'll call it frugal, but really it's just me being really cheap. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this one down on top as well. And then we'll put it on our album and I'll be right back. All right, so I have completed my front and back cover and spine decorations. I think I'm going to add a couple other little tidbits here and there once I get the album completed. I don't want to like rough it up too much as I'm working with it. But I love the way this turned out. I love this sort of torn edge here um, for a kind of a snowy effect. We've got the, our, our spine piece that I just love so much. I did go ahead and put a piece of that same scrap cardstock here in this section, mostly because I ended up snagging my ribbon in the adhesive there. And so I needed something to keep me from doing that again. If that happens, this worked like a charm. I ended up putting some rubbing alcohol on a, on a cloth and just sort of soaked it and rubbed it off and it came right off so I don't have any more adhesive stuck to there. So if that happens to you, you that, that will work. <laughs> I am not going to attach this piece yet because again, I want to be able to work on the album without, you know, messing it up too much, but I really like the way it turned out. I'm very, very happy with it. I will end up um, doing this. This will be kind of later on in the tutorial, but I'm going to end up making this with a magnetic closure and a place to open up so that you've got, you know, a little, um, a little kind of card front book plate. I don't know what to call it. It's just something I stuck on the front of it <laughs> because I think it looks really cute. And so now let's go ahead and start working on the inside of our album and, uh, and start with our front and the inside front and back covers. For the inside front and back covers, we're going to do a pull down waterfall. And this is a prototype that I made and y'all, it is a big pull down waterfall. <laughs> it's a really big pull down waterfall. And it's got eight different flaps on it, pulls all the way down. Plus you have all of this room here to put or, um, you know, other photos on or journal or whatever it is that you wanna do. And I just, I love it. So I know that these seem, they can be kind of intimidating. You see them and you think, oh my gosh, I could never do that. And I have made some that made me wanna pull my hair out. I'm not gonna lie. This one is so easy. I have made some modifications to how I've done previous tutorials of these, and I think it comes together really easy. There are four sections or four parts to this construction. The first one is the piece that all of these are attached to, which is this long piece right here. The second part to the construction is all of these, you know, flaps, all of these photo mats, right? The third part is the attachment piece here that attaches to the bottom one of the uh, photo mats to sort of give it a fixed point so that the waterfall can actually work. And then the fourth part is this attachment piece that I created to put on here because I feel like it just makes it a little bit more sturdy in its attachment. And I made some modifications, so I made this piece exactly the right size so it lines up with the top and it lines up with where this bottom attachment piece is supposed to be. So it takes all of the guesswork out of it. I did a couple little extra pieces to it, which is I added this little attachment piece here to give it a little bit more you know, strength to it. Um, a lot of times, I know you guys have seen me use grommets. I'm not using grommets in this one, just in case someone doesn't have grommets available. You know, Feel free to do that. But by doubling up on this, not only did I lengthen it just a little bit, which is what I wanted it to do. But I also created a, um, a nice strong attachment here. I'm not afraid that that's going to pull out in any way at all. And it also lines up in such a way that it just falls flush with this piece. So nothing is going to catch or get caught in any way like that. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. And like I said, that's going to be on the front cover on the inside of the front cover and the inside of the back cover. We're going to have this pull down waterfall element. 
So let's go ahead and get started with the construction on this so you can sort of see how this is gonna come together. Now I'm gonna run through all the pieces needed, but you're gonna need two sets of all of these pieces because I've already used half of them to make the, the one that was sort of my test or prototype. I'm gonna put that one on one of the front or back inside covers, and then we're gonna build this one for the second one. So you will be making two of them. I'm just gonna run through the process for you know how to make them here. You are gonna need one piece that is six and a quarter by 12, you're gonna need one piece that is six and a quarter by seven, and that's gonna be the backing of the pull down. It's gonna make all of your alignment much easier. You're gonna need one piece that is an inch and a quarter by 12. You're gonna need one piece that is, it's gonna end up being six and a quarter by one, but I'm gonna start off with six and a half so I can trim it down to fit. So six and a half inches by one. And then you're gonna need eight pieces that measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And be sure to cut these in the way that I showed at the beginning of this video so that you can maximize your you know, pieces that you get out of a single sheet of 12 by 12 cardstock. To begin, we're gonna make some scores on our piece that measures six and a quarter by 12. You're gonna place it in your scoreboard on the 12 inch side and you're gonna score every half inch until you've made eight score marks. So you're going to score every half inch from the half inch mark until the four inch mark. So we're going to score it a half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, and four. Okay. And I do like to then go back over them a second time lightly with the narrower uh, end of my scoring tool, I feel like it just helps me to get a crisper hold on those score marks. So I'm going to pass back through those again. And then once that's done, we're going to fold and burnish all of our score marks. And once we have folded and burnished all of our score marks, we're going to begin attaching our pieces that measure four and a quarter by six and a quarter. We're going to begin attaching them to our um, scored unit here. Now, you know, it feels like this should be the top, and in fact, this sort of is, but it this gets folded over on itself, and they're going to be laying like this. So I just like to open it up from that point, and I'm going to start at the, at the bottom here, and we're going to place our glue in between. We're, we're going to come up almost to that score mark, but not touching that fold line, okay? And then come all the way down over the rest of it. So we're basically just making sure that our glue is falling between the score marks here. And then we're gonna attach our piece, but I like to fold it over. And this is just a way for me to help make sure that my, my piece is being attached straight because I'm, I'm looking down here to the sides to make sure that I'm lined up on both of these sides as well, that I'm not overhanging or that I'm not crooked in any way. And even as I'm doing it right now, I'm finding that, yep, there's some places that it really needs to be tweaked a little bit. And once that's set where I like it, I'm gonna also fold it back and double check to make sure I've come all the way up to the edge of that fold line but not gone over it any. Just like that. Go ahead and give it a nice firm burnishing. Open it up and burnish from the back side. I'm lined up just the way I wanna be and that looks good. And so now I'm gonna take my next one place my glue between the score marks and being really careful not to go on the fold line. But I also want it to come, you know, up. I want full coverage still. I take my next piece and because I was careful to line up the first one, I now just have to line these up with the one below. So I've got that lined up where I, you know, the two sides are straight here. I'm gonna fold it back on itself and just make sure I'm all the way to that edge without going over the edge of the fold. Just like that, give it a nice firm burnishing. Place glue on the next one. And I'm gonna continue moving all the way on up, putting my glue between the score marks and the folds and placing them on, just being careful to keep them lined up straight as I go. So now that we've got all of our pieces glued down and I think they look really great. They're nice and straight um, with each other. There's a good even reveal and they're gonna you know, move just the way we want them to on here. I think this is really awesome. So now I'm gonna add a little attachment to the bottom here. When you fold it over on itself, there's only 
um, a quarter of an inch hanging down here for you to pull from. And that's, you know, I did eight of them. I, I maxed this whole thing out so we could get as many as we as we can in here, but it only left me with a quarter of an inch for this pull here. So what I'm gonna do is I've got a piece here that measures one inches wide by six and a half inches long. It's longer than it needs to be to fit on here, but that's because I wanna be able to trim it to fit. I want a custom fit on there. I'm gonna score it in half lengthwise. So I'm gonna put it in my scoreboard on the one inch side and score it at a half an inch, just to give me a really accurate fold here on this. Fold and burnish it really crisp. I want a very crisp fold on here. And then this is going to slip on here where I'm gonna place some glue. I'm gonna close this up on itself so this quarter of an inch section here is showing, right? And I'm gonna place some glue almost to that edge of my, um, you know, of the photo mat that's just above there. Careful not to get it on there, but you know, I'm getting like maybe an eighth of an inch section of glue on here. Open this one up and place glue on the very edge of one of these sides that, that doesn't have the fold, right? Just like that. And now I'm going to, once I've got my page folded over on itself here, I'm going to butt up the edge of this attachment piece with the edge of this photo mat here that's the lowest one. I just don't want it to come past that. I want it to come right up there to it so it's flush and give it a nice firm burnishing. And then when you flip it over, you can see that I've got an extension on here so that when I fold this up, I've now got a half of an inch instead of just that quarter of an inch. I'm gonna go ahead and pull off some of this glue just so I don't make too much of a mess. And then from this side, all I need to do is go ahead and put glue all over the back side of, you know, that, that's still open here on this fold piece, fold it over on itself, burnish it down, squeezing out any glue that may seep out. And there we have it. We've got this little extension on here that's evenly spaced. I know it's gonna be an even half inch. It's not gonna interfere with the functionality of this. It's not gonna butt into it, but it's a nice thick, uh, piece that's uh, just a really nice finish on it. This artisan cardstock is just so very nice. And um, and I've got it so that if I do my hole punch and pull it down and I don't have a grommet in there, I'm not going to worry that that's going to rip out at any point. This is nice and sturdy here. Now, the reason I cut it at six and a half instead of six and a quarter, even though this is six and a quarter wide, is I just wanted to make sure that I had an exact cut. You know, sometimes I, I might be off by just a little bit and I wanted it to come all the way over so that it looked like it was, you know, the perfect finish. And then in order to trim it off, I'm just gonna place my scissors right up next to the edge of that paper and give it a little clip. Do the same thing on the other side here. Just give it a little clip. Oh, that one went in my coffee cup. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's in my coffee. Oh, well, that's okay. And then um, I'm just going to continue to burnish this down. I just want it to be really nice there. And then I'm going to take my corner rounder. And y'all, I have been fighting my We Are Memory Keepers corner chomper. They're great, wonderful tools. I think there's just something wrong with mine. I've had to do it on both sides and it's been really a pain. And I picked this one up at Country Craft Creations recently, and I'm so happy I did. I love it. It works very easily. You don't have to push really hard on it. Three different sizes of the corner rounders. I just love it. I think it's great. I, and so I did the seven millimeter uh, rounder on the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and continue just for some continuity and do that. And I'm gonna round over, right over this piece I just placed in there. And look how nice that finish is. Get the other side. Now you do have to make sure it gets in there, right? Because if it gets in there crooked, it won't cut it, you know, straight. But there we go. And so I've got those rounded. I'm gonna go ahead and round the edges of all of these flaps as well, and I'll be right back. And now that I've rounded them all my corners, I love the way this looks. I think it's coming together really well. And now we're just gonna move on to the remaining two pieces that we've got for this construction. And the first one is this piece that measures one and a quarter by 12. And because I'm making two of them, that's why this one is already folded. I went ahead and took one of my cutoff pieces that was like 
it was like three and a half inches or three and three eighths or something like that inches wide by 12 from when I was doing all my cutting for this. And then I, you know, I took the full piece, the wider than I needed it to be, that it's like three and three eighths or something like that. And I placed it in my scoreboard and I scored it at two and three quarters and nine and a quarter and folded and burnished those score marks. And then once it was folded, I then put it in my paper trimmer and trimmed them to the inch and a quarter width for both of them. And it gave me very accurate cuts and it gave me, um, you know, the, enough for both of the pull down waterfalls. So that would be my suggestion to you because there are pieces like that that are left over that are your cutoffs from when you're cutting all of your cardstock to build the album. And I just think it's an economical and easy way to do that. So we're going to take this piece here that we've now folded and, and burnished from our score marks and we're going to attach it to this little attachment piece here, this, this backing piece for our pull down waterfall. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach it to the bottom of this backing piece, not on this part. This part needs to be free, it needs to be open, but from these flap pieces. Now this is wider than the width of your, um, let me get a contrast paper here. So as you can see, this folded band is wider than the width of your backing piece. It's wider than the six and a quarter inch wide. And that's, that's, by design, that's supposed to be. I need this to have a little bit extra room in it so that those pieces can move in and out freely. So, you know, just eyeball, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but just eyeball so that you've got a similar reveal on each side. Actually, I'm gonna do it from the back side since that's what I'm gluing it from. So I'm placing it on there. I'm making sure that it's flush, that um, my pieces are, are flush with this edge. And then I've got a similar reveal on either side and I'm just gonna glue these down. And I'm not gonna glue it into this part that's you know, the overhang, right? So I'm not gonna come all the way to the fold with my glue. I'm gonna come back from the fold piece a little bit. Whoops, that's a lot of glue. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm gonna come back from the fold piece a little bit and then I'm gonna come all the way over this whole section and make sure I've got glue covering this whole section. And then I'll just flip it over and glue it down. Again, making sure that my edges are lined up here at the bottom, pressing it down and cleaning up any glue that may seep out. Okay, and now do the same thing with the other side. We're gonna open it up put our glue on our piece, not all the way to the folded edge. We're gonna come back about a quarter of an inch from that folded edge. And once that glue's on there, we're gonna just fold it over, making sure that we're lined up here with the bottom here. And there we go. Now we've got this attached on here. And so it's like, it's got a little opening here, right? We've glued it on the back of this piece of the, the pull down attachment piece. And then we've got this little part here, okay? So this is so easy, you guys. So now all you're gonna do is you're gonna open it up so that you've got this long piece here. You're gonna slip that into your little kind of belly band opening here, okay? Bring your attachment piece up so that it's flush with the very top of this fold when the whole unit is folded in half like this, okay? And it is the exact same width as your unit, so I'm also making sure that it's flush on either side here. So flush at the top, flush on the sides, that's just where I want it to be. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna lift this whole piece up and we're gonna put glue all over the top side of this little belly band here that we've you know attached to our backing piece and come along the whole section with your glue. And then we're gonna flip it back down, lay it on top. I'm making sure that I'm still flush top and sides, press it down, just hold it for a little bit just so that glue can take hold. And I come over, and I'm, I'm going over all the layers here. I'm not opening it up yet, okay? Flip it over. Again, I'm making sure that I'm flush on all these sides from the top and the sides. I kind of press it from the back side, just like that. And now, <laughs> this is so cool, look, it's done. That's it. That is your pull down waterfall. And you can make these in different sizes. You can, you know, do the different 
however many ones of these little um, pieces you want to attach to it. My only suggestion is just make sure that you've got it set up in such a way because it's easy to construct if you use this little attachment piece on the back because now I didn't have to mess around with making sure it's in the right place. It's just naturally in the right place. <laughs> I just love it. So that's your pull down waterfall. You're going to make two of them. We're going to attach those to the inside front and back covers of our book. Oh, one other thing. I do want to go ahead and, and do a, a hole punch here. So I'm going to line this up with my centering ruler, find my center, make a little mark about there, and then just take your hole punch and punch through. If you have a hard time seeing the hole on the black cardstock, I have found that if you just kind of hit that little dot with, you know, a, like a white gel pen, it stands up so much better and you can really see it through this hole. So now I can really see my dot on there and go ahead and give it a little punch. I've got my hole in place. I can attach my string and we are good to go on this. So now let's get ready to put it inside of our album. Like I said, we're going to, I've made two of them and we're going to attach them to the inside of our front and back covers. And they're just going to be attached down here on both of them. But I want to put my backing paper on first because as you can tell, you know, this is, I, I need to put that paper on before I can glue it down. So go ahead and set those to the side and let's get our paper that we're going to use for our, uh, our covers here. And the paper that I'm going to use to, you know, cover the inside of our album here for the front and back inside covers, as well as a little piece I'm going to cut underneath the spine is going to come from this, um, this paper here. It's the one with the larger snowflakes with the green background. And so I'm going to cut these and I'm dry fitting, making sure that it's all going to work. I love it. I think it's going to be perfect. I went ahead and cut a piece that's just under three inches wide to slip underneath my hinge attachment here. And that's going to fit perfectly. It slides in there just the way I want it to. Then I'm going to cut another piece from this paper that also measures like eight and 15 sixteenths by six and 15 16 six and seven eight somewhere in that range and i'll be right back and now i'm going to try to conserve paper so these are large pieces of paper and that are going to be covered by a large element you're not going to see much of that so i'm actually going to cut out an inside section on here and i can do that in part because i have this attachment piece that's going to cover it you're never going to be able to peek in here and see that there's, you know, the chipboard showing or anything like that in there. So um, I like it. I think it's great. <laughs> now we've got them both cut out. And I do think that what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to attach a piece on the inside. So I've harvested my pretty paper out of there, right? And now I'm just going to get a scrap piece to put on the inside. I'm going to flip those over and I've cut a couple pieces of scrap cardstock. It's just some scrap 65 pound cardstock and they're uh, like five and three quarters by seven and a half. They don't quite come all the way to the, you know, they don't quite fit in there perfectly, but that's okay. Um, I actually wanted them to have a little room because I don't want them to in any way distort the opening. And then I'm just going to come along here with my double sided tape and lay it over that, that seam where the two kind of connect. So now that they're kind of attached there, we have what is essentially a full sheet of paper. It's not going to wiggle out of shape or anything like that. So I'm really happy with this. I'm going to go ahead and ink my edges and glue these down. And you got to move kind of quickly, get it pressed all the way into place. And then I'm making sure, I'm going to take my ruler in again, and I'm going to make sure that it's not catching on the edges of my, um, of my gussets. And this one's up on the lip of the gusset. Darn it. There we go. Sometimes if you pull this away, you can kind of get in there. Take my ruler back in. I'm just kind of pressing it down here with my ruler, making sure that it's where it's supposed to be. Take my other bone folder and slip inside of here and just really burnish that down. I had a little bit of glue um, sort of catch here on the edge, so I'm gonna clean that up with my eraser. It comes right off. Check the other one, yeah, just a little bit here. So now as you can see, we've got our paper inside of our kind of spine piece there. So it adds a little decorative element, peeks up around the top and the bottom, and I think it looks really nice. So let's go ahead and attach our waterfalls then to our pages. And y'all, like I said, this is just so easy. 
all you do at this point is you're going to put glue all over the back side of this attachment piece. So you're not going to come into this area here where I've got the white paper showing. Don't put glue down here. You're only going to put glue all over the back side of this attachment piece, this piece that measures six and a quarter by seven. So we're going to glue it up and then I am including glue, you know, on the back side of this, these flaps that I, I glued onto the attachment piece too. And so once we've got all of our glue in place, we are going to place it on here and I'm thinking about a quarter of an inch from the top and a quarter of an inch from the, the side here. And if you're unsure, you can just take your ruler and lay it on here and I'm I'm very happy with that. I'm, I'm a quarter, I'm just a slightly over a quarter of an inch from the edge of the chipboard, but I'm right on the quarter of an inch mark um, coming down here along the edge of my paper. And so once that's in place and I'm just sort of pressing it down, I'm gonna come over the whole thing with my burnishing tool and then take one of my bone folders I've got a mess here, you guys. I need to clean off my desk. And I'm gonna reach in from the top and really press down this entire piece from um, between the layers here. Cause you know, this this whole thing will, will lift up, right? Is this not just the easiest pull down waterfall you've ever made? Yep. I'm really happy with that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and attach the one for the back cover. There we oh. go. Check this out. Is that not just the coolest pull down waterfall ever? It was super simple, it's super easy. I love the way the mechanism of it works. It's not catching on anything. I think it's great. So, all right, now I am gonna cover these with pattern paper, but I'm gonna wait because I wanna see what scraps I've got to use those at that point. So for now, this is finished. I'm also gonna come in and put maybe a different bow on here. This was just something I put in place. I have um, already attached the other one to the front here. Isn't that just the best? <laughs> I love it. So our front and back inside covers are completed. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to page one. For page one, we're gonna need two pieces that measure eight and a half by four and a half, and one piece that is three and a quarter by four and a quarter. And we're going to take our scoreboard and score on the four and a half inch side, we're gonna make a score at a half an inch. So this is gonna be a gatefold opening on our page one. I don't want it to be too thick. I've only got a three eighths of an inch gusset between page one and our front and back inside covers. So I don't want this to be a particularly thick area, but I do wanna have some interest and I thought a gatefold would be really nice there. So um, now we're gonna fold and burnish our score marks and I'm gonna round the corners opposite the fold and we're gonna glue them down. Now I'm gonna glue down the one over here on the right hand side of the page first. I'm going to come all the way to the edge. In fact, I'm going to take out my, uh, my page insert just so that I can really feel and make sure that I'm right on there. And then we're just going to glue them down. I'm going to place glue all over this half inch flap here. And then I'm lining it up with the folded edge of my first page here. So I'm getting my corner set up here. I'm going to bring the other one down. Once I've got that where I want it to be, I'm just making sure it's lined up all the way with this folded edge, right on that edge, making sure my top and bottom are flush, and they are. I'm gonna give it a really firm burnishing, and then I'm gonna toss some clamps on there. And that's just gonna keep it really tight so that that glue has really firm contact with the paper below because there's this process that's happening right now. So um, the, the glue is a water-based glue, so it is, uh, causing the fibers of the paper to swell. And so on both sides of that paper, those fibers are swelling and expanding. I'm putting the pressure on here is really important because that's gonna make sure that they are close together as that glue sort of has them knit back together. So it becomes a single unit and that's what I want it to do. So now I'm gonna put glue on the other one while those clamps are sitting on there. Once I've glued that all up, I'm gonna come over here, but I'm not gonna come all the way to the edge. I'm gonna come like, I don't know, like a 16th of an inch away from the edge of that paper that is attached to the spine or you know to the hinge because that way I've got a little bit of room. I, I'm creating some bulk here and I wanna make sure it's opening and closing easily. So I'm not coming all the way there. So if you can see, here's where the hinge is, okay? This is where the paper is that I attached. And this little bit over here is where I'm attaching my, um, my gatefold piece.
piece here. And on this one, I, I can't get the clamps in here, so I'm really gonna take some time and just continue to apply even pressure, pressing it down all the way from the right side and open it up, press it from the inside, you know, or from the front side and then the inside, close it back up again and really just continue with that pressure because I, I want those fibers to knit together very tightly. And once that's in place, I'm gonna pull these clamps off. Go ahead and burnish this one more time. Yep, I think that looks great. So now we've got that in place and that's gonna be able to open and close freely because we did back it off just a little bit from the edge of where that attaches to the spine and it looks great. So now this is gonna have a magnet um, and a little decorative element that's gonna be our closure on this. So we've got our piece here that measures four and a quarter by three and a quarter. I'm gonna round the edges on all four corners and that's gonna be attached on here in the center portion. And then we're gonna put a magnet over here on this side for a magnetic closure. So I think I'm gonna use one of my uh, cutoffs here. This was a scrap piece from the um, one of the, the front and back cover pieces that I put down. And I'm gonna line this up and I think I'm gonna put this over my little gusset and then on into my page. It's certainly certainly big enough. I'm, I don't have enough of this paper or large enough pieces of this paper, I should say, even though I cut out these center pieces, they're not quite large enough to put on this side. So we'll have to do a, a complimentary piece on this side. But I think this is a nice look for it because it's sort of gonna carry your eye across there if I've got the same uh, pattern here. And this is three quarters or uh, three eighths of an inch on this gusset. So I know that I need to cut a piece off of this side that is a quarter of an inch wide. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm actually gonna put it into my, my trimmer here and I'm gonna come back a quarter of an inch. And that's just gonna give me a um, quarter of an inch strip, quarter of an inch wide strip that I can put over that gusset piece here and check and make sure, yep, that's just the size I want it to be. And then I'm laying out this piece on my flap and I'm gonna make a little tick mark on the width on where I need to cut this one as well. My little mark here. Go ahead and trim that down and then i'm going to go ahead and round the corners give it one last dry fit just to make sure let's get some contrast paper here you can see it and i think that looks really great so now i'm going to go ahead and ink my edges and glue this down well i just realized that i didn't put my magnet down yet and i was supposed to have a magnet underneath there to catch for my decorative element that was going to close here so um, i could do it the other way which is you know fine i could definitely do that and it could open like this. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a little change. I normally like to have them fold the other way, but this is fine. And I wanna make sure I don't forget to do it this time. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get those pieces together so I don't make that mistake. So I just made a little mark at where I want the top of this to be. That's pretty close. So now I'm gonna make a mark at the top and the bottom along the edge here. And that's gonna let me know where my glue mark needs to be. And so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the glue making sure I don't come beyond those two marks into this whole side, just like that. Come back here so that I've got that centered. That looks great. Let's go ahead and burnish this down. Make sure I don't have any seeping out, just a little bit, not much. Erase that little tick mark. It might show. Okay, there we go. Okay, I went ahead and put my magnet on and I felt like it was a little bit too strong of a magnet. I used the larger of the basic gray magnets and it just, it felt like it was way too strong. So instead, whoa, I got things flying around over here. <laughs> instead, I'm gonna use the smaller sets of magnets and I'm gonna do one at the top and one at the bottom. And I think that that's gonna be um, plenty of, of hold here for it but I am gonna place these magnets so that they are up against the edge here. When I cover this with the pattern paper, you'll see why it's it's not gonna be an issue. Um, but I'm just trying to give myself a little bit more room around this edge so I don't end up with a bulky area right there on the very edge. So I'm gonna peel off the backing of my magnets and I'm coming in about, oh, three quarters of an inch from the top and the bottom. And again, I'm lining it up right with that edge here of the, 
of the skate fold piece, right? Go ahead and take the backing off of the corresponding magnet. I forgot, I haven't, it's been a while since I used the basic gray magnets and I forgot how strong they are and they're really great. So go ahead and press that down. And then when you lift it up, yeah, that's gonna be great. It's gonna carry the load here for me. I'm gonna be able to open and close the page without fear of that opening up. And um, that's gonna be just perfect. So now that I've got my magnets in place, I'm not afraid I'm gonna mess that up again. <laughs> Although I'm sure I'll mess up something else. Um, it's, just, it's just what happens. So that's really nice, honestly. And I'm gonna take a piece of ribbon to create kind of a pull here so we have something to grab a hold of. I'm sure you guys have seen me do this like a million times before. I'm just gonna do it again very quickly. I've got like an inch to an inch and a half long piece of ribbon. I'm gonna grab a piece of double-sided tape, fold my ribbon in half, and get like a nice crease there on, on my fold. I'm gonna lay the fold on one of the lines on my my mat, and I'm gonna come over, I think this one, I, I want it to have a little bit more of a reveal. So I'm gonna come over to about 5 eighths of an inch from that fold, and lay my tape down. And then I'm just gonna wrap it around to the back side. So now I've got like a little unit here that is just gonna be easier for me to attach onto this um, piece. So I'm gonna open it up, peel off the backing here. I'm gonna line my ruler up on here, finding my center. And then I want it to stick out, oh, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, something like that. That looks pretty good. Just double check. Yep, I like that. And so now I'm gonna come over the back side of that adhesive with some more double-sided tape just to hold it in place like that. And there we go. Now we've got a little handle to, to grab it with. I like it, <laughs> it looks really cute. All right, let's go ahead and pick some pattern paper to go on the rest of page one and then we'll move on to page two. I did wanna point out how I'm handling this joint. Uh, remember we pushed those magnets all the way up to the edge. I didn't want it to be necessarily a separate piece um, sitting over there on its own. So I'm bringing it on into the back side of this one here. And then when I come over with my pattern paper, it's gonna just lay over the top of that. And so I just wanted to point out that that's how I'm sort of handling that there. And all I did was just use this little scrap from one of my cutoffs and it worked out perfectly on there. So that's in place. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to um, round my corners, ink my edges, glue it down, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got all my papers glued down on my page one, and I think it looks really cute. <laughs> Isn't that great? Now I did do some pattern piecing here. I went ahead and butted those two pieces up together, put some double-sided tape on the back side, and then I cut it to fit. That way I had um, you know, exact height the the same on both of them and i think it looks really nice and then we've got our little you know our little wagons here our little wood sided w station wagons at least i think that's what they are i don't know <laughs> i thought this was really great for page one because what do you do when you you know christmas time you travel so got page one with a little bit of a travel theme here it says it's the most wonderful time of the year and yeah i think it looks super cute so now let's move on to pages two and three Now for pages two and three, we're gonna do a double twist and pop, uh, kind of pop up here element, where we're gonna have them open up like this, and there's gonna be this um, twist and pop that happens. And I love these, I've done them on a lot of different albums. <laughs> you guys might be tired of them. I don't think I'll ever get tired of them. I just think they're fabulous because it just adds so much excitement to your pages and it doesn't detract from any of the room that you need to put some photos or journaling or things like that. So for our elements, we need two pieces that measure eight by 12, four pieces that measure three inches by 12 inches. For the two pieces that measure eight by 12, you're gonna place them in your scoreboard on the 12 inch side and score them in half at six. And for the two pieces that measure three by 12, you're gonna put them in your scoreboard on the 12 inch side and you're gonna score two of them at three, six, and nine. And you're gonna score two of them at six on the 12 inch side. And then you're gonna turn it and score it one and a half 
on the three inch side. So two of them, you're gonna score them in quarters going across the 12 inch side at three, six, and nine. And two of them, you're gonna score in half widthwise and lengthwise. I'm gonna fold and burnish all of your score marks. And for the piece that is scored at three, six, and nine, you're gonna fold it uh, valley, mountain, valley. So you want the mountain in the, built in the middle. And so what I like to do is I like to fold it in half so that I've got that mountain in there. And then I'm gonna bring each of these side pieces and meet up with that fold line of that center mountain fold to create my valley folds on either side so that I have a piece like this. So it's valley, mountain, valley, just like that. And for this one here, we're gonna actually take this, once we folded and burnished both of our score marks that are in half length and widthwise, we're gonna do an angle fold here. I like to put my finger right in the center there where those two lines cross. And I'm gonna bring this over at a 45 degree angle. So I meet up the score line. This score line here is gonna be folded on top of this score line here. And this score line here is gonna be folded on top of this score line here. So we're gonna just gonna ease this over. just like that. And so we're basically gonna be folding an X into the middle of this, um, of this sort of plus sign that we've got here. So there's one side, and then we're gonna do the opposite side in the same way, folding it over so that this score line here meets up with this score line. Before I press it all the way, I'm gonna turn it over and make sure that I'm lined up back here and I'm not. I've gotta tweak it just a little bit. Look at that one. And this one. And so now I've got a piece that looks like this, where I've had the cross folded in the middle, and then I've got the X folded through that, that cross. And I'm just gonna squeeze these two side pieces, these two leg pieces together, and they are gonna naturally bring themselves into position so that I have this sort of triangle piece on the top with these legs down the sides. And I've heard this called, you know, a house. I've heard it, you know, referred to as these are the the legs. I've I've heard it referred to as an arrow. Um, whatever it is, this is what it, you end up with. And so you're going to take it again. Once we've made those folds, once you squeeze it together, you're going to end up with the triangle piece on the outside, and these legs on the inside with the fold part of the legs meeting each other in the middle. Okay. And now what you're gonna do is um, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna attach this piece on top of this piece. But before I do that, I wanna round my corners, not on the folded edge of the legs, but on the edge that doesn't have the fold where you've got the two pieces kind of out there on their own, on the leg pieces. I'm gonna take my corner rounder and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna cut both layers at the same time, just like that. Do the other side, not the fold, but the open side here. And then for this piece here, we're gonna round all four corners of each one of these square sections in here. So it's just a series of sort of folding it in half and going through and hitting it with the corner rounder. So I'm gonna kind of do those two together. Let's see, fold this one in half, do these two together. And then once I've finished rounding all my corners, I have a piece that looks like this. And I'm gonna have ma valley, mountain, valley with my rounded edges. And I have this, you know, arrow piece here like this where I've rounded the edges on the bottom of the legs on the open side, not on the folded side, okay? And so now we're gonna assemble it. We're gonna open up this piece here so that the folded edge on the legs is, is pointed up. So I've got kind of the mountain side of that folded edge pointing up, okay? So it's gonna sort of sit like this. And this one here, again, Valley Mountain Valley, and it's gonna be attached right on top of there. So I'm gonna take a little dollop of glue in the upper left-hand corner here, and I would say it's like the upper third. And so you want a dollop of glue about that size. I've got about three quarters of an inch wide and three quarters of an inch long there in that upper third. I'm gonna take this piece here, which is the exact same size as this piece. This is why I like this method. It's so easy. They just line right up. You can't, you can't help but get them lined up. And I'm gonna lay it on top of there, 
so that that glue is catching in that upper left hand corner making sure that my sides are straight all the way down and that this is, you know, it's just exactly on top of there. They're the exact same size and so it's just gonna fit right on top of there. Once that's sort of taking hold, I'm gonna give it a little burnishing, squeezing out any glue that may wanna come out. And then I'm gonna come over here to this lower right-hand corner and do the same thing. I've got a dollop that's about three quarters of an inch laying it over on top. And again, I'm meeting these two pieces so that my four edges are all lined up. The whole thing is going to lay on top of the one below. Give it a burnishing. And now if I take these two sides here and I sort of bring them together, this whole unit is going to fold up on itself just like that. I've got my triangles on the outside of my folds here and I've got my little legs on the top and the bottom of my little folded up unit here. Okay. And so I do like to go ahead and cut the very tip off of this little triangle unit up here because there's just a lot of bulk up in there. We're gonna set that aside. We're gonna make our second one. And once we've made our second one, we now have both of our little twist and pop mechanisms. We're gonna put those aside, fold and burnish our piece that began as eight by 12 and that we scored at six inches. So we're folding that in half on the 12 inch side so that we've got this rather large card here that measures eight by six when folded up. Do our second one. And now we have both of our card bases and both of our inserts for our twist and pop we need to go ahead and start getting our pattern paper ready. And I've selected the paper that I want to have on the, the base part of my page here that's gonna come across. And I'm going to actually connect this paper over here so that I can cut it as one sheet for um, all of my little, my, my two pages and then also my gusset here. So I'm just sort of laying it out here, making sure that that's gonna be a large enough piece to cut from, and it is. I cut this just short of eight inches by 12 inches, and then this was my cutoff over here, and I went ahead and cut this one to the same length as you know, this height here, and that's what I'm gonna use. So out of one sheet, I'm gonna be able to put this together here. I'm gonna turn my paper over because I want that blue side there for my background, and I'm just gonna butt this up right next to the other one, take some double-sided tape and I'm gonna attach that seam here together so that I've got a longer piece of paper to cut from. Just pressing it up against there, running my tape right along that seam. I got my tape crooked. <laughs> Come along with another piece here. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. It just went on there really crooked. So I'm gonna sort of peel back part of it and go back over the seam straight. <laughs> and then place that over to sort of hold it into place. There we go, that's just fine. <laughs> and then when I turn it over, I've got my paper is seamed together here. And yeah, you can sort of see the seam up here, but this, the majority of this is gonna be behind, um, behind our elements. So you're really not gonna be able to see this at all. So now I'm going to get my book out here. Because I've got the seam and because your eye naturally goes to the upper right hand corner, I'm gonna place the seam on the left side. I'm gonna go ahead and lay this across the top. I'm gonna take out these so I can see my top a little bit better. And I've got a little piece of contrast paper and I'm gonna lay this across the top here and I'm gonna be able to see where I want this to end. And rather than you know measuring it and cutting it, I'm just gonna lay it on here and make my marks to cut to fit that. So there's my tick mark for where I need to cut for this page. I'm gonna scooch that tick mark just to the other side of this hinge and lay it inside of that gusset. And then I'm gonna make a tick mark for where I need that piece for the gusset to be, the width of that piece. And then I'm gonna scooch it over again. Let's move my paper over here this time. And so I've got the first tick mark for the gusset, the second tick mark, I'm gonna scooch that second tick mark over to the other side of the fold there for the gusset so that I'm into the page area now. And I'm gonna make my last little mark here for where I need to cut for that page. We're gonna go ahead and make our cuts here. And now I've got my pieces cut and my pattern is continuous and I think it looks really great. But I'm not gonna glue them down just yet because, 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 <laughs> because I have these elements I'm gonna be gluing down on top of that paper and the same thing, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, this whole project is an exercise in 
harvesting paper. <laughs> we are going to cut the centers out of these. They're going to be sized in such a way that we're going to be able to use them. So um, I am going to go ahead and make some marks on these and cut them out. And once I've got those cut out, I now have these pieces here that I can either use on my, you know, the, my, my covers here. I could use them inside. I could use them in all sorts of places because these are rather large pieces. Now I'm gonna go ahead and ink my edges and glue them down into my book, just like this. Now that I've gone ahead and glued down my pieces, and I know it, it, it doesn't look great you know, with these windows cut out, but it's going to make sense once we get our twist and pop elements on there and it's it's gonna look fabulous. It's gonna look like it's just a continuation there. And I was able to use those interior pieces. Okay, so now to assemble our twist and pop card elements that are gonna be inserted on our pages. We're gonna start with our two card bases that we folded to be a six by eight inch size. We need four pieces of pattern paper or cardstock that measure five and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And we are gonna apply those to the inside of our card base, just like that. And we need two pieces that measure five and three quarters by seven and three quarters, and that's gonna be for the front cover. Now, what I chose to do was to layer these up. I went ahead and took that center piece that we cut out from our uh, the base of our pages here, and I layered it up with some red artisan cardstock as well as this shimmer paper that I've been using, and that's what I'm going to put on my front of my um, of my elements here. But it doesn't have to be that. You can just use you know just a, a piece of pattern paper or cardstock that measures either five and seven eighths by seven and seven eighths, five and three quarters by seven and three quarters, whatever your matting preference is on that. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and place my paper on the inside of my card elements. And now that we've got our pattern paper on the inside of our card elements, we're gonna attach our twist and pop mechanism on the center um, of the of our card base, on the center of the fold. So what's gonna happen here is the tip of our twist and pop is going to be lined up with the center point of our fold and I just like to turn it this way because I can see it a little bit better and I'm not coming all the way up to the fold because I cut that tip off right so I'm coming up to what it would have been if the very tip were still attached and that came to the fold and y'all this is exactly size it's coming out to the very edge here I usually give a little bit of wiggle room I'll show you how we're going to handle that but just to let you know, if you feel like, oh, it's coming too close to the edge, that's okay. And once I've got that centered where I want it to be, I'm gonna place some glue all over this triangle portion, only on the triangle portion here. And get that all covered. I don't want a lot of glue, um, but I, I do want it to be covering the whole area. We're gonna go ahead and close up this whole, this whole unit here. And I'm just gonna like let that set for a little bit, kind of let the heat from my hand go over that. Just let that set, turn it over, open it back up and put glue just on the triangle section on the other side. And then we'll close this up. Same thing, kind of, you know, let the heat from your hand sort of travel through. I'm just pressing, I'm gonna burnish from both sides. I'm gonna clamp it closed on the you know end that has the opening on it just so that it stays in place for a little bit. And I'm gonna move on to the next one, go ahead and glue it down in the same way. And then once that's attached, I'm gonna sort of clamp this one closed to set aside and we can go ahead and open up this one and you can see the magic. Isn't that awesome? I love it, I think it's really fat fantastic. And so we're gonna go ahead and put some decorative paper on here, but let me just show you why I love this method so much. When I go to decorate it, I can lay this completely flat. I don't have any issues with it because they're both the same size, and yet the mechanism still closes up in that way. Isn't that cool? So um, I wanted to put the twist and pop element first before I put my front cover on because I'm gonna have some magnets underneath my front cover. And because the bulk of this may move some of the placement here of the magnets. So let's go ahead and decorate this because that's just gonna add additional bulk before we then move on to adding the magnets and the front cover piece that um, I've gone ahead and put together here. And now they both open up just like this. Don't they look great? 
I'm really happy with them. So now the next thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and decorate the insides of these because um, that's going to create additional bulk. And I don't want to put my front cover decoration on yet until I've got everything I want inside of this unit because I'm going to use magnets to close this. And I want to make sure that as I'm adding more bulk, I'm not throwing my magnets off of alignment. So I hope that makes sense. And for these, I've decided to do something a little bit different. I have cut four squares that are two and three quarters by two and three quarters. And that would be a size that would fit as a matting piece inside of here. And then I cut them on the diagonal and I'm going to alternate them on these twist and pop mechanisms so that I've got these little sort of pockets here. And then inside of the pockets, this collection has the cutest little cut aparts, like little tag put cut aparts. And then we'll be able to tuck these inside of there. And I think it's gonna look really cute. And y'all, I was able to use those little cut aparts here from when I cut my angle pieces, my, my diagonal stripe. So that makes my frugal heart really happy. <laughs> So I do need to go ahead and round the corners on these. Things. Now I've got a bit of, of a conundrum here though, because I needed these to be squared so I could see the angles, you know, the corner to corner that I was gonna cut to, to cut these angles so I'd get these half square triangles. But as I'm, you know, I'm wanting to round the corners and now they're not together, so it's gonna be hard to put them in my corner rounder. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place them back together where I cut them apart from and put some repositionable tape on them just over the center. And that's gonna give me something that I can then take to my corner rounder and go ahead and insert in there and make that cut. And so I'm gonna do that on both of the angle pieces here, just like that. And then when I take off that repositionable tape, I have these kind of cool rounded pointed corners here that I think are pretty neat. So I'm going to go ahead and round all of my corners that need to be rounded. And if I need to tape them together to round them just temporarily, I'm going to do that as well. And I'll be right back. And now that I have all of my pieces cut, I'm going to take two of the stripes, two of the snowflakes, and I'm just going to glue them down alternating. I think this is going to look really cute. <laughs> And I'm going to glue them down on two sides. It's just a really simple pocket here. I'm just taking my glue and placing them on the curved 90 degree edge here and centering it on my paper and placing it down. And once I've got that where I want it, I'll go ahead and burnish it down, get the rest of them stuck down. And then once those are tucked down, it's going to be really easy to take some of my little uh, tag cut aparts here and tuck them in all of their little pockets. Aren't these cute? <laughs> I just think this is really adorable. Get them all put in here. And then once those are all in there, it's just gonna close right up just like that. <laughs> How cute is that? Don't you just love it? Oh my gosh, I'm I'm absolutely in love with this. I think it's absolutely adorable. And it's so interactive and fun because you can just come and pull these out. You can journal on the backs of them. I mean, you could put little photos in here if you'd prefer, but I just think this is too stinking cute. <laughs> All right, let me go ahead and get the ones on this other one and I'll be right back. And now I've done the, the other one and I'm super happy with it. One of the things I wanted to point out is you need to make sure that your pockets are lined up in such a way these pages are going to open in a mirror image. Actually, it's going to be like this. So this is how the pages are going to open up in your book. So make sure you put your pockets on the right way. On this second one I just did, I didn't. I put them on upside down and I all I did was I split. I just pulled my little spots apart here, you know, where I had glued it in those two corners. I pulled them apart, turned it around and glued it back down. <laughs> it worked out perfectly well. Um, actually, it was this one here that I did that too. And um, yeah, I think they look really awesome, don't they? I'm super happy with it. I love this twist and pop element because there's plenty of room to put four by six photos on either side. You still have plenty of room for photos and journaling and all of that. So these are fantastic. And I'm gonna write on here which one the front is just so I don't mess up and <laughs> put something on upside down. Isn't that just too cute? Oh my gosh, I love them. I can do this all day. So now let's go ahead and put our magnets on. How we're gonna do our magnets is I'm gonna put, because this is a pretty big element and it's pretty bulky here, I'm gonna put one magnet on 
the top and one magnet on the bottom of each. We'll have a corresponding magnet underneath to close it, and then I'll show you how we're gonna have a little loop here to be able to open this up. So I'm gonna find my placement here, and I kinda wanna come in like an inch down and an inch over on each of them. So I'm just looking on my mat here, I'm coming over an inch and up an inch, and that's where I'm putting the corner of it. I'm not putting it inside of that inch square, I'm putting on the outside corner of that inch square here. And so they're gonna hold it closed just like that. I'm glad I wrote front on here. <laughs> and I think that looks really great. I'm gonna go ahead and these already have the, them stuck down. For these, I'm gonna peel the backing off and stick them down. And I'm being careful to make sure I've got opposite polarity for the other one. So like this is repelling, so that's the one I wanna stick here so that when the pages are closed, they're not gonna catch with each other because I'm putting them in the same placement. So like this one would, would attract, I need to go to another one, so that's gonna repel, okay? And then peel off my backing. And I'm gonna do the same thing here where I'm gonna kind of come up an inch and over an inch and in that sort of little corner junction over there is where I'm gonna place it. So now I wanna add a couple little pull tabs on here and I'm gonna cut a link that is, um, I'm gonna cut two links that are two inches long. So I've made a couple little pull tabs here in the same way that I showed before and I'm gonna peel off my, um, my backing and I'm just gonna find my center point so that I've got a, just a little over a quarter of an inch sticking out. Go ahead and stick that one down and do the same thing with the other one. And once I've got those where I want them, I can go ahead and glue down my little cover pieces that I made. And now we've got our twist and pop elements complete and they're super cute. I think they turned out fabulous and let's go ahead and put them in our album and it's so easy to put them in the album we're simply going to place glue all over the back side here and stick them down center them in here and stick them down i'm actually think i'm going to move them pretty far to the right mm, i don't want to come all the way to the right but i'm going to have more of a reveal on the left side or, or the, the side that's towards the gusset than I am towards the edge. So it's not perfectly centered. It'll be centered top and bottom, but just a smidge to either of the sides here to kind of give that effect. How cute is that? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put glue all over the back side here, and then I'm gonna position it on my page. Like I said, I'm kind of coming, um, scooching it over towards the, the edge of the page and giving myself a little more room towards the center, but I'm centering it top and bottom. And then I'm gonna open it up and burnish it really, really well, making sure I've got good contact all along here. Coming into that little area where the triangle is, making sure I'm getting behind there. I'm really burnishing this down. And once that's completely burnished down, we have got our just absolutely adorable twist and pop element. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and glue down the other side and I'll be right back. And now that we've got them both down and they just open up like this, <laughs> How fun is that? I am loving it. I think it's super cute. Let's do some decorating on it. All right, so to decorate the front, I've decided that I want to use from the um, chipboard elements or chipboard accents here, there were these banners that say Merry Christmas. So I'm going to glue these down as well as I cut from, you know, one of these pieces that we harvested out of the center here that I had seamed together. I went ahead and fussy cut some of these little snowmen, <laughs> they're so cute out of there, back them on some scrap pieces of my black artisan cardstock. And then I'm gonna glue these down just like on this little, this little corners here so that I've got a tuck spot. And I'm gonna do the same thing with these Merry Christmas pieces. I'm only gonna tack them down in two places so that I can create like a photo mat that's gonna slip in behind there so that we can have photos on the front of both of these elements before then opening them up for additional photos. Um, I think it's gonna look really cute. So let me go ahead and get these tacked on, cut my photo mats and I'll be right back. All right, now we have finished pages two and three and I think they look absolutely darling. I went ahead and cut some little photo mats just to stick in here and um, it can be a journaling card, it can be for photos, whatever you want. <laughs> I think they look so cute. And then they just open up like this and we've got our little twist and pops. I am gonna add some other decorative elements in here. You know, I've got some other little um, snowmen that I can cut out and kind of put in the corners, but I will wait till the end until I do that. I may even want to cut some more of these little tags and maybe stack them up along here where I've got a tuck spot coming to the side. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet, but I think it's just absolutely darling. I'm super happy with it. Let's go ahead and move on to pages. 
For pages four and five, we have four pieces of cardstock that measure six and three eighths by five and a half. And we're gonna score them at a half an inch on the five and a half inch side. Fold and burnish your score marks. Round your corners on the side opposite the fold and glue them onto your pages and towards the edge of the page. So we're gonna come in we're going to have a little space here between where that flap is and where the gusset begins. I'm scooching it all the way over to the edge here of my page, and I'm going to put some clamps at the top here just to hold it in place until that glue sets. Place glue on the next one and position it at the bottom lower left of page four in the same way that we did with the top there. To burnish it down and place some clamps on it and then repeat the process for page five except aligning it towards the upper right and lower right this time giving us that little bit of space here between where the gusset is and the pages and clamping it down for just a little bit and once we've glued all four of our flaps down our page is going to look something like this we've got all sorts of room in here to attach all sorts of things. And I think what I wanna do is I actually wanna put these cut aparts on here for attaching the magnets. And as I'm looking at this, I'm thinking I might wanna add some of these cut aparts on here for uh, like my closures so I can put my magnets in there. I'm not sure which ones I wanna do, but let me go ahead and get those together. All right, so I'm trying to kind of lay out my pattern paper here and figure out what it is that I wanna do. And I've decided that I really want this scene here to be underneath my flap so you open it up and you see all these Santas and they're just super fun. And I could have laid it out so that this center strip was coming out of the very center of the paper, but I wanted this December 25th to be, um, you wanted you to be able to read it in its entirety and I didn't want it to be cut in half. So instead what I chose to do is I chose to cut these pieces here at five and a half inches. It gave me a little bit of a, of a cut off here. Can't find it, but I don't know, it was like, three quarters of an inch or something like here, this is what it was. So this is how much paper I sort of quote unquote wasted off of that so that I could center it so that that image was in there, but that's okay, I'm okay with that. I was able to use some of my other cutoffs from this paper to come up with some little side strips here and I'm gonna do some paper piecing and lay that in there so that that all goes together. For the fronts here, I've cut two pieces out of the plaid and two pieces out of the snowflake pattern and I don't know if I'm gonna arrange them like this or maybe like this. I haven't quite decided yet, but those are what's gonna go on the fronts of the flaps. And those were cut to four and seven eighths by six and a quarter. And so I've got four of those, but I need four more that are four and seven eighths by six and a quarter to cover the inside flaps here. And that's a little, you know, I don't wanna really cut into paper like that, right? So I'd rather conserve my paper. So I've come up with this little idea here that I'm gonna use some of this extension part of this branding strip. So these were some cutoff pieces that I had from the blue paper that I ended up putting on this one here, right? And I'm going to put these on here and then I'm gonna add a strip. And this is some cutoffs from the front cover that I did. Oh, can you see this? I think I'm out of frame here. Let me get this back into frame. Let's see, that's better. So I'm gonna attach this piece on here and then this is gonna be a strip at the top and I'm gonna leave it open as a tuck spot so you can tuck something up in there. So as you're opening and closing it, something's not gonna go flying out. It sort of holds it in place. And I thought it turned out really nice. There's the sentiment, you know, the, the words are still on that paper there. And so that's gonna work out. I am gonna have to round these corners so that it matches up and I'm gonna sort of scooch this down a little bit lower but if I line it up just right, I think that that's gonna work for me. And for these down here, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'm gonna go ahead and start inking my edges, gluing everything down, and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna put together down here and we'll meet up after I've sort of figured that out. Let's go outside, the snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. The snowman is twice the size as me with a smile as quirky as mine. We're holding hands to keep each other warm while we stand And watch a choir perform and all the Christmas songs that we love Yeah, all the Christmas songs that we love And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire Cause all I want is to spend this day with you Let me give you a Christmas 
pages four and five and I think they look so stinking cute. These lift up like this. I left this open underneath here so we can tuck our photos or you know pieces of paper for journaling or what have you up there and then it folds all the way down like this and we've got this beautiful large spread here and I think it looks really cute. I did some paper piecing down here. Let's see if you guys can see that. And I was able to kind of capture these sentiments written on the green paper as well as some strips of the snowflake paper. And I think it looks super cute. I elected to not cover any pattern, you know, paper on the back side of these little attachments here. I think the black can be sort of a design element all on its own, and I'm really happy with that. Quick so. little recap here. We've got page one completed with our gatefold opening here. We've got pages two and three with our dual twist and pops here. And now we've completed pages four and five with our large little flaps up and flaps down. Plenty of room for lots of photos. Now let's go ahead and move on to pages six and seven. So for pages six and seven, you're gonna need two pieces that measure eight and a quarter by four and a half. We're gonna need two pieces that measure eight by 12. And then we're gonna need four pieces of eight and a half by 11 cardstock that is cut down to seven and a half by 11 inches. So we're just gonna cut an inch off of the long end here. And this can be any type of paper you want. I'm using like a 65 pound cardstock, but honestly, that's overkill. You could just use printer weight paper. You could use tea dyed paper. These are for some booklets that we're gonna be making. So that's just, you know, your choice, viewer's choice on what you wanna use for those. They measure seven and a half by 11, and we're gonna place them in our scoreboard on the 11 inch side and score them in half at five and a half inches. And be careful if you're using lightweight paper because you don't have to score it quite so hard. You know, you don't wanna rip your paper in the scoring process. So just lightly score it at five and a half inches. Or if you prefer, you can just place it in your scoreboard and fold it over on itself in half and then just you know burnish that down and that's gonna work too. Fold and burnish all of your score marks. And then for the two pieces that measure eight by 12, we're gonna place it in on the 12 inch side and score them in half at six inches. And now we're gonna work on our little booklets and I'm gonna take two of the pieces that measure seven by 11 that we scored in half at five and a half inches and I'm gonna nestle them into each other so that their folds, they're you know, kind of nestled in here along that fold line. And then I'm going to lay them out here on my, my cutting mat, and I want to make a couple marks. We're going to poke a couple holes in here. And my center here is going to be three and three quarters of an inch, you know, from the edge. That's going to be the center point. So I'm going to make a mark with my pencil at my center point. I'm going to make a mark at three inches down from there, which is three quarters of an inch up from the ends on both sides. So three quarters of an inch in, and then I'm gonna go an inch and a half between, cause I've got three inches distance here. I'm gonna go an inch and a half so that I'm in the center there and an inch and a half over here 
so that I've centered between that. I'm making a series of five marks that are all spaced an inch and a half from each other, and I've got a three quarters of an inch from the top and the bottom before those markings begin. And then I'm just gonna take my pokey tool, I'm gonna make sure that I'm still lined up the way I wanted it, and I'm gonna go through and I'm just gonna give it a little punch right on those holes, just to create a little punch through there, right? So I've punched right through those holes, and I'm gonna push it through a little bit more to make the holes a little bit larger. Be careful, don't poke your finger on the back side though. I've done that <laughs> and it's not funny. I don't know why I just laughed about it. <laughs> and so now that I've got all of those holes punched, I'm gonna then take it over here to my cover piece, the one that measures eight inches by 12 inches that we scored in half at six inches here. And just cause I don't want it to wiggle on me, I'm gonna put a couple clamps on here to keep it from turning left or right or anything. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna take my little tool and I'm gonna punch through each of those little holes that we've made. Go ahead and take my clamps off. I, I really just don't want it to wiggle while I'm doing it, so that's the only reason I'm doing the clamps. And these big ones are probably overkill. They're just what I had available, like within arm's reach right now. Um, you don't have to do that. And then I'm gonna come back through and I'm just gonna make the holes a little bit larger by pressing my pokey tool farther into the puncture that I made. And using an upholstery needle or a darning needle or some sort of a larger eyed needle, I'm gonna thread some of this baker's twine through this. I don't know how long I need it to be, so I'm not even gonna, I'm not even cutting it off of the spool yet. I'm just putting some in and I'm gonna start threading it through. And I'm gonna begin on the outside of one of these holes and I'm gonna just feed it through and beginning on the outside of one of them at the, you know, either top or bottom, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna feed it through, coming in and out, just back and forth through these, um, through these little openings that I created with my pokey tool. And then once I've completed all of those stitches one way, I'm gonna come back up and I'm gonna go back out through the same hole and just sort of complete the stitch going the opposite direction so that I've got the, the stitching is gonna be showing on the outside and the inside evenly. So I'm gonna come back through this hole here. And this is just a really simple, I'm just doing a simple stitching. This is nothing fancy. I'm just stitching this little booklet together, that's all. And then when we get up here to this top part, I'm gonna tie it off. And this is why I didn't, I didn't know how long I needed it to be, but I do have a lot of extra. Hold on, let me see if I can pull some of this slack back through. And that's okay. And so now up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and tie this off in a knot. And I am gonna leave some length on here, maybe not that long, but I am gonna leave some length on here because I think I wanna come back in and tie on some charms, but I don't know yet. So I'm gonna come down at least to the length of, well, maybe a little longer than that. How far are we gonna come down? Let's just cut it like that. I know this is way longer than it needs to be, but I'd rather have it be too long than too short. And this is our booklet that's gonna be inserted in our accordion pockets that we're getting ready to put together. And I think it looks really cute and it's just a simple little booklet. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing, you know, special. It's just, it's just fun, right? <laughs> I just thought it would be fun to add a little booklet in here and it could be for journaling, you can put, you know, photos in here. It can just be like a little junk journal. You could put a recipes in there. It could be recipe books for your Christmas recipes, or it could just be a Christmas shopping list. Anyway, so that's how we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one. And again, I'm leaving these tails on here because I think I'm going to add some charms and I just need to get to my charms. I don't have them out right now, <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and leave those tails on there for now. Let's go do the same thing with the second one. And now I finished both my booklets. And again, these are way longer than they need to be. I went ahead and measured how long this is as it is right now and I've got about a yard each so you would need two yards of baker's twine to if you were going to do them the way I did and again you don't need them to be this long but I think it's going to be really cute I'm going to try to come up with some little charms here to dangle off of there so we're going to go ahead and set these aside for a little bit and so for the piece that measures eight and a quarter by four and a half you're gonna place it in your scoreboard on the eight and a quarter inch side, and you're gonna score it at one half, three quarters, and one, seven and a quarter, 
seven and a half and seven and three quarters. And then you're gonna turn it to the four and a half inch side and you're gonna score it at a half an inch or at four, either way. I'm gonna do that for both. And then I'm gonna fold and burnish my score marks beginning with the half inch fold on the four and a half inch side. And we're just gonna fold and burnish those. And then these three score marks on either side are gonna be scored in a mountain valley mountain, mountain valley mountain pattern. So we're gonna get an accordion fold on those sides here. And it's gonna create an accordion pocket for us to place our little booklets into. And once we've folded and burnished all of our score marks, we're gonna to have to make a couple cuts here. So on these lower pieces here, where you've got this half inch fold up, we're gonna cut out this little rectangle down here that goes through all of the accordion folds all the way up to that last one. So we're gonna cut out a rectangle that looks like this on both sides. And I'm just cutting right along those score marks. And then we're gonna make a few miter cuts. So beginning at the half inch section here, we're gonna place our scissors right at that junction and just miter out ever so slightly. And do that on both sides for the bottom and both sides for the top. And then on this bottom half inch section here, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna miter out ever so slightly from that half inch portion there, okay? And then once we've made all those cuts, we're gonna crease up and kind of refold our little accordion sections here. Make sure they're down here really well. And then I'm gonna take a dollop of glue on the bottom of this accordion folded section on both sides, just like that, and then fold up this half inch bottom section here. And that's just gonna sort of hold our pocket in its shape so that we're not fighting it while we're gonna glue it down into our page. Really burnish that down very well. There we go. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other one cutting out these little rectangles, mitering it, and then gluing it together there at that little dollop. And now that we've got both of our pockets ready to go into our album, we're gonna go ahead and retrieve our album. And our pockets are gonna sit on our pages, scooched all the way to the edges. This is some bulk here. I don't want it to catch as it's trying to open and close. So this is a smaller section than the width of the page itself. Our completed pocket is six and a quarter inches wide. Our pages are six and a half. So I'm scooching it over a quarter of an inch from the gusset to, just to give me a little bit of extra room. So in an effort to try to continue to conserve paper, I know I sound like a broken record here, um, but instead of cutting this piece, which I would like to have for my background piece sort of for pages six and seven, um, instead of cutting this piece to fit the full width of the page, I'm cutting it just to fit inside of the pocket that we've created. And that's gonna sit over here, and that's uh, only six inches. So I was able to cut both of them out of a single sheet of the cardstock and still have my, you know, my image carrying across here to not only cover the gusset, but also have a stripe um, kind of next to the gusset that's going to show where we've got that pocket kind of scooched over. So I'm going to have like a, a stripe down the middle of the red. And what I'm using is I'm using the backside of this page here with all these tiny little tags on it. And when I cut them out, I was very careful to only cut. So these are the same tags that I use for the twist and pop pages, right? For the twist and pop here, that's the, the tags that I put inside of there. And I was very careful when I did that to cut a strip along one side and the bottom so that I could keep a larger section here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of my pattern paper and I'll be right back. So I've decided to go with the same paper on the, the background page as well as the front pocket because once this paper is in the pocket and this is on top of the pocket, then we've got our little booklets that are gonna be inserted inside as well. And so you're not gonna really see that much of it unless, you know, it, until you take it out. And I think it's gonna look really cute. I've cut a piece wider than I need it to be to go over the center section here. And I'm going to actually lay that one down first and then we're gonna put everything else on top of it. And I know I've got a three quarters of an inch gusset in here. So I need to cut a piece in the center of this uh, paper that's five eighths of an inch wide. And how I'm going to do that is I'm gonna look at my, my, my piece here, which actually measures two and five eighths of an inch wide. 
So I know that I need to cut an inch off of either side, and that's gonna give me a 5 eighths of an inch wide section in the center that I can put over that gusset. So I'm just gonna come over to my one inch mark, make my cut, and then I'm gonna flip it over and make my cut at the one inch mark again so that I'm left with that piece that's gonna be perfectly centered in there. And now I've got my pieces that are gonna be lined up perfectly. The pattern's gonna continue through there. I'm gonna go ahead and ink my edges and glue these down. And in a while we're gonna go inside and drink our chocolate by the fire. Cause all I want is to spend this day with you. Let me give you a Christmas moment we'll fill with love and joy with love and it's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe baby with you with you with i don't you. need any presents as long as i spend this day with you, with you. Mm -hmm. it's a beautiful kissing on a mistletoe baby with All right, I've got my pattern paper down and now I'm gonna start putting some papers on my booklets. And y'all, these pieces I cut out from the front, look, <laughs> they're like, they're not perfectly sized, but they're almost perfectly sized. I just need to do a little trimming on them. And I'm gonna either use that for the front or the back cover, I'm not sure which. Maybe I might even do the green on here. I'm not really sure, but I'll meet you back here once I'm done. We have all of our paper on our pages. We've got our accordion pockets on here. We've made our booklets and I went ahead and placed some pattern paper on the fronts of them and I created these little book plates using some of the cut aparts and some of the scrap you know, pattern paper that I had, um, some of the cutoffs that I've been using. On the inside of our booklets, I was able to use those cutouts that we did from the front and back cover and place those inside of there. Again, I had some scrap paper here. These are just glued down on three sides here. I went ahead and rounded the corners and I did make a little notch out of there. I like to use a small punch board here for that notch, but you can use whatever you like or you don't have to do it at all. It's just a little place for me to have, you know, a little pocket there on the inside. On the inside back covers of our booklets, I went ahead and added a couple other little tuck spots here using some cut aparts from the collection as well. And I just think these turned out super cute. I am loving the way they look. I love that we've got these little pages in here and you don't have to just do four pages. In fact, if you're doing a lighter weight cardstock, you could certainly do more pages in your signature here. I just was using that 65 pound cardstock, which again was a bit overkill. And um, and so I only did two just in the interest of kind of thickness, right? I didn't want it to get too thick. And so these are gonna fit perfectly in our little pockets here. And they're gonna be so cute. You're gonna be able to take them out, use them for whatever it is that you would like to use them for. I do wanna go ahead and add some charms to them though. So let's go ahead and take our booklets back out. And I've just been digging through my stash and I found a couple charms here. Now these I had purchased from Country Craft Creations a long time ago. They were in a pack. I don't see them on the website right now. But Tamara does have some other really beautiful charms on there. And if I can find some, I'll link them in the description notes below. These were just some extras that I had in my stash. And then I had this earring at Hobby Lobby um, like a long time ago. The One of the earrings was missing. And it wasn't in a clearance aisle. It wasn't anything. I just took it up to the front counter and I said, hey, can you guys mark this down since there's only one earring? I didn't want it for an earring anyway. I wanted these little jingle bells. And um, she, the manager just gave it to me. <laughs> She's like, just just take it. We don't want to deal with it. So um, so here's my, my free little find here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the jingle bells off of here because they're sized in a way that I think are smaller. And I'm going to tie them as well as a charm on each one of these. And then I'll be able to trim down my little cords here. So let's go ahead and get that done and I'll be right back. And I'm just going to take a pair of jeweler's pliers and sort of pull apart these jump rings. And when you're doing that, you don't pull it this way. You bend them forward and back so it sort of opens up that ring. And then what you end up with is a, a circle like this that you've sort of opened up. 
And that way you can always close them back up just by squeezing those two sides back together. And then you end up with a complete circle again. I'm going through here and picking out the smaller sizes of the jingle bells. And you know, you guys use what you've got in your stash. Use what you've got in your collection. This is just one of those little extra things that I'm doing. It's not necessary. I am gonna end up reusing the jump ring and I, I need one jump ring per, per uh, bell here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that back up. And it's just gonna make it easier for me to thread that string through when I've got um, a larger opening. And then when the ring is open, then you can place, you know, like if I wanted to place the charm on the jump ring, I would just loop that through there. And then to close it back up, all you do is you just squeeze it with your jeweler's pliers. Oops, well, you don't drop it. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can hold it up here. And you just squeeze it together like that until you get a complete circle. And sometimes you have to kind of fiddle with it a little bit, but it's really not hard. And I don't need it to be super tight. I'm not putting a fine thread through here. I'm putting this thicker, you know, uh, twine through here. So as long as the twine can't fit through the opening, I'm good to go. So for these two here, and I, I think I want one more. Let's see, are all the red ones? We'll do a green one on here. And then all I'm gonna do is feed my twine through those jump rings. And then I'm gonna kind of figure out where I want to hang down. I feel like that's pretty good. I've got two jingle bells on individual jump rings here. And I'm bringing it down, oh, like an inch and a half to two inches. And then I'm just gonna tie a knot, kind of trying to keep my length about the right length. If you hold it in place and then pull your string tight. It shouldn't be too much longer than that. Yep, about an inch and a half or so. Just give that a nice little tight tug. And then I'm gonna come down about, oh, let's say a half an inch from that knot. Let me see, is it half an inch enough? Uh, three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna come down three quarters of an inch from the knot that I just tied. And I'm just gonna fray it out. I think it'll look kind of cute. And now I'm gonna take the little charm that I put a jump ring around, tighten it up a little bit. It looked a little loose, but that looks good now. I'm gonna give my, twine a fresh cut so I can get it through my opening and excuse my fingers they've got glue all over them so I know they're really dirty but eh that's what it is and then I don't know I want it to either be a little bit shorter or a little bit longer than that one I'm thinking a little bit shorter so I'm going to hold it in place where I want it go ahead and tie a knot around that as well pull it nice and tight and then go ahead and cut it about three quarters of an inch below that and fray it out also and by fraying it out, I'm just untwisting the um, the twine. And as I'm looking at it, I'm thinking maybe like a half an inch is really what I need for my little tail. So trim that off a little bit. And there we go. I've just got some little charms, dangles hanging off of here. I could have done more. I could have omitted it all together. It doesn't really matter. I just thought it was really a cute little, just a little accent to put on there. It makes some noise. <laughs> I like that it makes a little bit of noise. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the other one in the same way and I'll be right back. And there you've got it. We now have our little charms here. <laughs> Aren't they fun? I just think they're really fun. So um, let's go ahead and put these back in our album. These just slip right in here. There's plenty of room for them to expand and hold even more stuff if you've got more to put in there. <laughs> and I think they're a lot of fun, yeah. I like that a lot. They're not gonna get in, way, in the way with the page opening and closing or anything. They're gonna be just fine, and <laughs> I think they're super cute. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and move on. We're on page eight, y'all. It's the last page. So for page eight, we're just gonna do an angled pocket, and we're gonna begin with a piece of cardstock that measures eight and a half by six and a half, and we're just gonna put an angle pocket on here. I like to put a pocket on the front or the back of my album because it's a great place to tuck things as you're sort of working through it. So what I mean by that is as the month is progressing, let's say I wanna use this you know, for, for a December daily, or maybe I just wanna use this just for a Christmas album. As I'm collecting things that I want to put in there, it gives me a place to place them until I have the time to sit down and really go through and glue them into place or, you know, journal or whatever the things that I want to do with them are. So I think pockets are really necessary in albums, just my opinion. If you don't 
want to put a pocket in there you don't have to but the other reason that I'm doing this on this back page is again for the same reasons I didn't do anything super complicated on the front page here and I wanted to keep it kind of simple is because I've only got a 3 8 of an inch gusset between the front cover or the back cover and that page there so it just makes sense to me for you know for that to be a place for a pocket so let's go ahead and close this up and we're going to begin with a piece that measures eight and a half by six and a half and we're going to place it in on the six and a half inch side and we're going to score at a half an inch on the six and a half inch side and this one is sort of side specific. I want this to be on the left hand side because that's where my pocket is going to attach over there. And then we're going to turn it so that that score mark is at the top of the scoreboard on the eight and a half inch side. And we're going to score it at half an inch again. Fold and burnish your score marks. And then if you, you know, if you want to miter this little corner down here by cutting straight through, you certainly can. I always seem to make a mistake in doing that. So what I do is I fold one of the sides back you know, where I've got these two folds meeting and it's created the square there. I fold one side back and I place my scissors right in the junction of those two folds and I clip it out. And then I fold the other side back and I place the scissors in the junction again and make a clip. And that way I've got, you know, I've removed some of the bulk from that corner, but I know I haven't cut into something I shouldn't have. And the reason I know to do that is I've done that before. <laughs> And I want to go ahead and tack this little corner down. I'm going to take the longer piece here, the longer folded piece, and lay it down first and then bring this bottom one up. So I'm going to put a little dollop of glue on here. And then I'm going to bring this bottom piece up into that glue and um, you know wipe off any that seeps out and just hold it for a second. It just tacks it into place for me and I feel like I, I have more control over it that way. And now we're going to turn it over and we're going to make our marks to make our angle cuts. All I'm going to do is I'm going to come over from, so this is my folded edge here, my long folded edge. So when I'm looking at it from the right side with the folded edges underneath me, and I have the folded edge on the bottom and on the left hand side, I'm going to come up to the top left and I'm going to come over one inch and make a little tick mark. And I'm going to come to the bottom right and I'm going to come up one inch and make a little tick mark. And usually I just take it to my paper trimmer and match my tick marks up on the cutting edge. But this is a longer length than what will fit in my paper trimmer. So I'm just going to mark between the two very lightly with a pencil. And then using my scissors, I'm just going to cut off that angle piece there. And I want to erase any of my pencil marks that remain. Bring back my album. I'm going to place glue all along the back side of these folds for our pocket and then I'm going to glue it down coming right to the edge of the lower left hand corner of page eight and all up the side. Once I get that where I want it to be I'm going to put some clamps on it and now that we've got our pocket attached here and it looks really nice it's time for us to go ahead and start putting on some pattern paper. I've cut out my matting piece for my angle pocket and on the piece that I cut off here that was like this from the paper when I cut it off, I went ahead and cut out some of these snowmen. Now one of them, this one was cut out from previously uh, when I did the other two snowmen cutouts and I had it kind of setting up here to the side. So I'm going to use all three of them and we're just going to come up with some sort of a little scene here to go along the bottom of this pattern paper before we place it on, um, on our, our pocket for our matting and I kind of want to come in and do some more snowy hills but the first thing I want to do is I want to cut this to the right size so that I you know know that I as long as I'm using that piece that's cut to the right size I won't go beyond that there we go now I, I have sort of a, a parameter to work within <laughs> when I start ripping my paper because that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do some torn edges here to make it look kind of like a snowbank, and then I'm thinking we'll attach these guys on the front and then we'll have a snow bank behind them as well. So maybe we'll do a couple layers of snow banks. I'm not sure yet. Let's see where this goes. So the first thing I'm going to do now that I've got a piece that I know is going to fit on my matting layer um, in, the, in the way that I want it to, I'm just going to start kind of ripping and making, you know, like a, a hillside. So I'm just kind of curving up, curve back down, bringing it on over. And I'm just, I'm just ripping the paper. <laughs> there's, like, there's no real science to this. I'm just literally just ripping the paper. So I've got something like this. And then I feel like I can sort of stick my snowman around here. Maybe he might sit on front there. 
Yeah, I think that's gonna work. Let me scooch him over a little bit, maybe. Yeah, and once I get them in a in a, a little bit of an arrangement that I'm, I'm happy with, I'm gonna go ahead and tack him down with a little bit of glue here at the bottom because he's sitting on top of my um, of my snowbank. <laughs> You guys, I'm having so much fun with this, and I hope that you just have fun with it too. I, You do not have to make your album just like I am. You do not have to do the same things I'm doing. You know, let your inspiration lead the way for you. And um, it doesn't even have to be a Christmas or holiday or winter themed album. It can just be whatever works best for you. I feel like I want his arm to come over the front of the snowbank and his body to sort of be behind it. So we're gonna open that up a little bit, tuck him in. Yeah, they're fun. And since they're actually behind the stove bake, I'm gonna take some tape and sort of hold them in the placement that I want them in. And then from the underneath side, I can come in here and sort of tack them down with a little bit of glue so that they don't wiggle out of the placement that I was wanting them to be in. Just like that. And I'll pull this tape off the front. There we go, looking good. And now I've got the rest of this that I can tear for some snow. So again, I'm just gonna tear a little edge here. And this is exactly what I did on the front cover. I know I didn't show that part, but this is exactly the same thing I did there. Um, there we go. Line him up like that. So let's get it positioned just so, just the way we want it. Yep. And now I'm just gonna take a piece of the repositionable tape again and go over the front of it, just so everybody's everybody's in place. And then, um, let me see. I'm gonna cut a couple pieces because this is, I don't want my snowman to go falling backwards. So I'm going to cut a couple pieces of cardstock to go behind them just to keep them flush on the paper so that they're not dipping down there on this part that's sticking up. So let's put a couple pieces down here, just some scraps. And now that I've sort of got this weird haphazard piece on the back here, um, but I like the way it looks on the front, I'm going to go ahead and place my glue all over the back side, even and especially on these little bits that I put to sort of elevate those overhanging pieces and place it down and then just burnish it into place. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> it's so cute. We just created a little vignette, little little winter scene here. I'm gonna tack down underneath their little hands or anything that's not glued down. I'm gonna go along here with my glue bottle, reach under and just sort of tack it into place. Yeah, they're so stinking cute. And now let's go ahead and put it in our album and it's just gonna sit right on here. How cute is that? I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and glue this one down. I've cut some cardstock to fit behind our pocket here to go over our page. And instead of placing the glue on and then trying to slip it in and sort of fighting with it, I have placed it exactly where I want it to be I'm gonna take a clamp and I'm just gonna sort of clamp it at the bottom of the page so that I'm catching this cardstock also. I'm gonna lift it back and just place some glue underneath here all along the paper's edge and then all along the base of the page. And I'm, look, this is not, <laughs> this is not a pretty glue application. This is just me trying to get it on here um, as best as I can because I don't like having, when that paper snags, when you've got the glue on it and it snags because you're trying to put it into place, um, I don't like that. It's not fun for me. So this is a fine way of doing it. The paper's not gonna move. Um, everything is encased underneath this pocket. So it's okay that I don't have glue down there. Go ahead and take this out. And I would just rather get it set exactly where I want it to be and then um, slip some glue underneath there, and then I, I'm not I'm not crying. <laughs> That's just what we'll say. Then I'm not crying. 
because I have cried before over this. You know, not, not big tears, but definitely was a little heartbroken that I had to rip apart paper or it just ended up stuck in a way that I didn't like. Spreading that out. There we go. And then I've cut the little piece to cover the gusset. It's a three eighths of an inch gusset. So I have cut a piece that's a quarter of an inch wide. And there you have it. We've completed page eight. It's very simple, but if you want to add some journaling cards or other things in here, you certainly can. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep that for the purposes that I just explained earlier. If I have photos that I need to put in place, other things, this is just going to be kind of my tuck spot for my overflow. And I think it's going to work really great there. So let's go ahead and put this back in. And I did get a little glue on here. I'm not going to do anything with it now, but once it's dried a little bit more, I'll come over here with my eraser and that should lift off here. I'll show you. There was a spot there and it just comes right off. It sort of takes it from looking dull to the normal way the paper looks. And I think it's super cute. I love this a lot. Now there's only three things we have left to do to our album. And that is we need to put our pattern paper on our waterfall, right? And I'm debating on how I'm gonna do that. I think I just wanna put a little reveal of pattern paper along these bottom pieces and not put them all over just to keep the bulk down so that I can place the photos on here. The other thing that we need to do is we need to put some paper on all of our page inserts. And then the third thing we need to do is go ahead and on our cover, we want to finish our little card opening element. A few days ago when I started my album, I thought that I was recording this part and apparently I wasn't. So I do wanna bring you up to speed here. All I did was after I, you guys have seen me sort of make my, my front piece here, the one that's out of the chipboard, right? And I, I covered it and we harvested all of the paper from the ones below it to put it into place. And I think it looks really great. And then the part I thought I recorded that apparently I didn't was that I just took a scrap piece of cardstock that I had. And what is this? It's like three inches wide. Yep, it does not need to be three inches wide. I would say at least two inches wide. You wanna have something you know, with a little bit of you know, grip to it. You want to be a little larger size. But I grabbed a scrap that was three inches wide. I cut it down to six and seven eighths. This height is actually seven inches. I want it to come in just a little bit. So it's an eighth of an inch shorter than the height here. And I scored it in half at one and a half inches on the three inch side to create a hinge piece. So. I think you guys can see here, this piece of paper here, the strip here is folded, it's a hinge piece. Then I cut a piece of cardstock that was five by seven and just glued it on the back of it. And that's what we're gonna glue down onto the front of our album, the this whole element here. But not before we've kind of covered up our seam, seams and cleaned this up a little bit. So I do have another piece of cardstock here that is just under five by seven. It's like four and 15 sixteenths by six and 15 sixteenths, something like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and place this down just to clean up all my edges here so that you're not seeing any of these uh, where I've attached it. And then I have another one over here that I'm also gonna place down. But before I put these down, I wanna put some magnets in place because this is gonna have a magnetic closure. And I also wanna put a little pull loop with my ribbon so I've got a way to lift that up. And rather than using one large magnet in the center, I'm gonna do two of the smaller magnets at the top and the bottom just to sort of carry that load a little bit better. Pop out my magnets and I've placed them here about a half an inch in from the edge and an inch to an inch and a quarter down from the top and up from the bottom. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and close this up so that the adhesive on that side can catch the other ones. And I do wanna kind of press them down a little bit. There we go. And I'm just gonna center it on here, sort of, I don't know, rough estimate of a center on here. Place that down, and then I'm gonna go ahead and glue my cardstock over it to encase it all. And once that's covered, we basically have our little element here. And let's go ahead and attach it to the front of our album that is just, I mean, it's just looking so cute. In fact, I'm gonna open this up to the center page and just open it up flat like that so that we've got kind of a flat surface to apply it to. And all I'm gonna do is put glue all over the back side of this card element, and we're gonna glue it down. Once I've sort of got it where I want it, I'm gonna open it up carefully, 
Um, in fact, I'm going to kind of slip my bone folder between here to open it up. And then we're going to burnish it really well. I want this to be very, um, very stuck down. <laughs> Not a little stuck. I want it to be really stuck. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> sounds so silly. All right. And there you have it. We now have our little front door opening here <laughs> on the front of our album. It's so cute. Let's cut some pattern paper to put inside of there. And now we've completed our little front cover element. I think it looks really cute. It's certainly, you know, not necessary, but if it's something you want to try to add on there, boy, I really like it. <laughs> I like it a lot. I think it turned out great. All right, so now let's move on to our waterfall pieces. Balls. I just love the way these function. I think they're fantastic. And I really want to take advantage of all of the space that we have in this pull down section. I hope you can even see it all. It's so big. Um, I want to take advantage of all this space that we have in here for our design element, right? Like I want to take that into consideration and see if we can't do something fun with it. So I came up with an idea. You're going to need one full sheet of cardstock for each one of the pull down waterfall features. And I have cut this one to just under six and a quarter inches wide. It's like six and three sixteenths inches wide. So I'm coming almost all the way to the edge. And then that's leaving me with a cutoff piece here that's just over five and three quarters. So I'm going to set this one to the side and using this piece here, I'm going to cut the top portion and I'm going to cut this length to just under four and a quarter. So like four and three sixteenths to have a piece for here. And then I'm going to cut a series of strips that are all three eighths of an inch wide because this is a half inch distance here. And we're going to only put the pattern paper on these little parts that are showing we're not going to have pattern paper on the larger area of this, you know, this housing for our photos, right? Because I, it's a, this is a lot, you guys. By the time I stack eight photos up, and essentially that's what it's going to be, this is going to be bulking out kind of like this, right? And I just don't want all that extra paper on there, and I want it to be able to continue to move freely even after we've loaded it up with all eight of those photos, right? So I'm going to go ahead and cut this piece and then I'll show you how I'm going to cut these subsequent pieces. So I've cut my piece here that's going to fit on the front piece of my of my waterfall matting pieces, right? And that's going to fit just inside of the parameters of this four and a quarter by six and a quarter piece. Go ahead and set this one aside. And now I need to cut a series of seven more pieces that all measure three eighths of an inch. And I'm gonna do this in an interesting way because I, it's hard to cut a three eighths inch strip straight, right? And I wanna start backing it down, but this piece is longer than it really needs to be and I don't wanna waste any paper, right? Haha, <laughs> the theme of the whole video, right? So this is kind of interesting what I'm gonna do here. I'm just gonna make a pencil mark right at my six inch mark, okay? And, and I flipped it over because I feel like it's easier to see that on, on the stripes over here. So I've made a pencil mark at the six inch mark. I'm gonna back it down three eighths of an inch. So one, two, three eighths of an inch. I'm coming to the five and five eighths of an inch mark with that mark that I made originally at the six inch mark. And I'm gonna make a cut. And then I'm gonna line it up over here so that I make sure that I'm keeping all my pieces in order because I want the patterns to be able to stay, well, in order, right? And then I'm gonna back it down another 3 8 of an inch. I'm following my little tick mark here that I originally made at six inches and I'm gonna back it down one, two, three eighths of an inch. So now I'm that mark is at five and a quarter. And I'm gonna make a cut and stack it over here in the order of the, you know, that it's showing up on the page, right? And I'm gonna to continue to do that. I'm gonna keep backing it down 3 eighths of an inch. This time I'm coming to four and seven eighths, make my cut, and I'm gonna continue all the way down until I've made seven of these narrow 3 eighths of an inch wide cuts. And now that I've completed all of my cuts, I didn't have to you know, cut into this whole piece. I've got a, a sizable piece here that's left over. And by sticking a repositionable piece of tape over the top of all of our strips as we were lining them up, I've got them in order. 
Now, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm thinking I'm gonna use the stripe side. I know, it's bright, but bear with me. Um, because I think I want the seam to peek out from the bottom. And what I mean by that is it's gonna be contrasting with the stripe, and then as you pull this one down, this piece here that's the five and three quarters inch wide piece is what we're gonna use on the inside of this pull down portion, if you can see that. And so that'll be sort of what like peeks out and I think that might be kind of nice. So let's close this back up and let's refocus on what we were doing over here originally, which is these are the pieces for our waterfall mats, like our photo mats of the waterfall, right? And I've used the seven millimeter size to uh, round the corners on that waterfall. So I need to also round them on here and I wanna ink my edges. It's not so important for this to necessarily be in order on this stripe because I'm just gonna line up the, the stripes, right? But I would definitely need them to be in order in how I cut them and how I'm applying them on here if I were doing it with this um, this scene, this this pattern paper scene. And I, what, what I mean by that is each of these pieces are gonna need to line up in such a way that that, that picture, the image, continues even though there's gonna be a space between them. So you kind of see what I'm talking about there. And that would continue on up here. For using the other side with the stripe, it's not as important, <laughs> but I'm just showing you the process, right? So like if you did have an image on here, you wanted to show, um, you know, maybe you have like a big teddy bear or something like that, and it would be cut apart like that, and you could still be able to see it and recognize it as a complete image as long as they maintain their order. So now I need to go ahead and round these corners and it is a little fidgety and you do have to be careful to slip them in in just the right way. And let me show you an example of that. So I went ahead and did the back page already, the back inside cover. And when I did the back inside cover with this, doesn't this look great? <laughs> I used the other paper that has a scene on it and again, has, I have this scenic reveal back here, and um, it's like my little surprise, right? Well, when I was cutting those corners, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but it chipped out a little bit of the piece because I didn't have it in the corner rounder correctly. Fortunately, it was a lower piece and it's on this left-hand side and I don't know that you would notice it if I hadn't pointed it out, but I did wanna point it out to you <laughs> um, just in case, um, just more of a heads up. So just be careful when you're doing that so that you don't make the mistake I did. And so what I've got to do is I really just have to make sure that it is in this all the way, that both ends on this 90 degree corner are nestled into the notch that it's supposed to be in and not just on the cutting blade, which in that case, you know, caused a little nick out of there. So, so I'm going to round the corners on them, ink the edges and start gluing them down. The snow, the snow is, is falling, falling down. down. I've been longing for this Christmas. When everyone's around to share this holiday Yes, it's a time of happiness, a time of joy But now this year is twice as special Cause I'm hoping for us to fall in love in this winter wonderland Chilling by the fire as I'm trying to get your attention all of my striped paper on here and it's just gonna work just like that. I think it's super cute, it's like a candy cane stripe, right? And I know, you guys, I know it, this is so busy, but you're going to end up putting a photo over that and it's just gonna be this little bit peeking out around here and it's not gonna be as busy as it looks. So just keep that in mind and if you think it's too busy, you can always put an ephemera piece over it. I think that could actually be really cute on here. Then you could just put like a three by four photo over here or some journaling, I don't know. I think that there's all sorts of options that you could do on here, but I'm not worried about the busy pattern. I just wanted to point out to you that, you know, if your plan is to put photos on here, that's not gonna be as busy as it seems right now once those go on there. Okay, so let's move on to this piece here that pulls down because I wanna put some decoration on it too. And for this pull down one, we're gonna use this paper here. And how I'm gonna get the length on that is just, it's really, <laughs> this is really low tech. 
I'm going to push all of this back up in here. And I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to butt it right up next to where it won't go any further up. And I'm just going to take my pencil and make a mark right at the very end of this first waterfall piece, the one that we fixed, this one here. Okay, so I just, once I pushed it all the way up, paper inside of there, made the mark on there. And then just put it in your paper trimmer and cut it. And now it's perfectly sized to fit in here. And what you have to do is you've got to be able to bring it down all the way to the lip of this piece here. See where it butts up against there? To this piece that we put as the extension piece. And then this is going to be flush, okay? So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to ink my edges and glue it down. And now we have our waterfall covered. And <laughs> we've got this nice little surprise pop out down here. I think it looks great. So now let's go ahead and tie a ribbon down here. I decided to take the baker's twine out of the one in the back. And I'm electing to put a ribbon in here instead. So I'm just going to go ahead and feed this through. It's a six inch length of ribbon. And I'm just going to tie it in a knot and then I'm gonna tie it in a second knot. So I'm just double knotting it so that it's gonna lay down here really flat. Cut my ends at an angle, and then I like to just, you know, introduce it to a flame. I'm not touching the flame on the ribbon. I'm just getting it close enough that the heat from the flame is causing that to like seal off on the ends. If you're not comfortable with that, you can use fray check or you can honestly just use a little bit of art glitter glue on the ends of your cut and that will work as well. And now we have completed our waterfall on our front cover. And I've also completed the waterfall on our back cover here. And both of them have this kind of peekaboo scene and I think it's just super cute. And um, yeah, I'm really happy with the way that it turned out. And that is our album, y'all. The only thing we have left to do is to cover our page inserts. Well, we have finished it. It is now complete. We've got our little opening on the front here and I love it. I will say that hindsight, I don't know that I needed to do a chipboard front on it. Or if I did wanna do a chipboard front on it, maybe I could have done lightweight chipboard. Um, honestly, I think if you want to just build it up as sort of um, some dimension, then do the chipboard. But if you want to do the opening, I would say just do it as a card opening because it is thick, so it doesn't open all the way. It's sort of catching here on the side. It's not causing any issues per se, but hindsight, that would be my advice. But isn't it so cute? I just love it. And then look at this spine. Got this beautiful little scene on the spine. And I don't know, I might still go ahead and add a bow up here but I feel like we've got a lot of ribbon going on and you know that's why I didn't add it at the time. I didn't want it to end up being too much and I'm not sure that I wanna add that on there now. On the back side, we just have this little torn paper uh, snow drift effect with our sentiment that says Merry Christmas. And then we've got our tie closure and go ahead and open it on up. Also, we've got the gusset and hinge attachment here so the pages can move freely and I think that's really great too. And then once we open it on up, we've got this pull down waterfall that reveals this really cute little snowy seam here, the same one that's on the spine. And then over here, we've just got a gatefold opening. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I have to keep checking to make sure I'm in frame. This is a very large album, much larger than I usually make. And then we've got our dual twist and pops here that just open up and each one of them has this little tuck spot pockets on here. So, you know, you can journal on the back of these little tags. You could put little photos in here. This would be really cool if you adapted it and maybe did like a larger version of, you know, those photo booths that you get into. This would be really cool if it sort of looked like that. I think that kind of could be really neat. I was going to put some other embellishments on these pages and I decided to leave them blank because I don't know what size photos I want to put in here. And I just think they look great, honestly. And those just close up. We do have some photo mats in here that are kind of serving as a placeholder for something to be tucked in on the front of both of these pages as well. And I think they look really great. Turning to the center of the book, and I just want to show you, see how this is laying much flatter than it would without that gusseted hinge attachment. And it's actually relieving a lot of the stress at the joint because it's allowing those pages to do that, you know, as we're opening them and touching them and it's not causing um, it to want to pull away at that point. It has a little bit of kind of a shock absorber, right? <laughs> it's allowing it to move in that way. 
And on this page, we just have this kind of double flaps coming up. Both of these have a tuck spot area up here so you can slip a photo in, but more importantly, so that the things aren't flying out as you're opening and closing as well. And then on the bottom part here, it's really a big album. <laughs> And then on the bottom down here, this just folds out so that you've got these little sections to place other photos on or journal or whatever you would like. And I just love all our Santas and they're just so cute. And then these just close up easily like that. Let's go ahead and turn to the next set of pages. This is pages six and seven. And we've got two sweet booklets that are inserted here into our accordion pockets on each page. And I think they just turned out fabulous. Got a little tuck spot here on the back as well. You can tuck some papers in there, a pocket here on the front, and then our sweet little charms here um, that I think are super cute. And this just slips right on in here. And this one, we'll kind of look through it. Again, same, same concept. We got our little charms here, a little book plate on the front. We have a nice little pocket on the inside cover. Our pages are just stitched in, and it's only four pages in this signature, only a single signature. And then another little tuck spot back here. I did not put paper on the backs of them. You certainly can. I just elected not to since it's really just kind of sliding in and out. And I don't know. I just didn't put any paper on there. <laughs> And then on our last page here, on page eight, we've got these sweet little snowmen waving at us, you know, welcoming us on into winter, even past Christmas. A huge, deep pocket here. I mean, this pocket is so huge, I can get my whole hand in here. And you can stuff it full of all sorts of things. And then on our last page over here, we have another pull-down waterfall, the mirror image of the one on the front inside cover. And it also has a scenic reveal with the kind of more of the blue background on it. And it just folds right on up again. And that concludes the tutorial for our album. Yay! Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. This has been an absolute ball. Thank you especially for taking the time to write those sweet, kind words of encouragement in the comments section below. I am truly grateful and an extra special thank you to Tamara at Country Craft Creations for asking me to serve on her design team. I am just... I y'all know I'm just super excited. And make sure that you're clicking on the links in the description notes below for all the other Country Craft Creations designers so that you can subscribe to their channels and hit that bell notification so you don't miss out on the wonderful things they're making too. I hope you all are having a fantastic day. I hope you're being kind to yourselves and I hope you are finding some joy in your journey. Thanks so much, everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. It's cold outside, but the fire keeps us warm. We can spend the night underneath the mistletoe and i've gotten you a present that i put under the tree tomorrow it is christmas the first for you and me the snow is falling down and the storm is on its way but as long as you're around everything will be okay all I want to do is spend this holiday with you Tomorrow it is Christmas, the first for me and you I longed for this moment to have you for myself In a cabin out of nowhere, just us and no one else I've decorated everything to be perfect for Tomorrow